One of the weirdest things that happened while working as a park ranger was something I heard on the radio one time. There was a distress call coming from an unknown situation and somebody was literally screaming for their life over the radio saying that it's coming, it's coming. Every time that the responder made contact they kept saying, I don't know what it is but it's a dark figure that's chasing me. God why is it so tall? This went on and off for a horrifying 3 or 4 minutes until eventually there was complete silence. It turned out the call was being made by a hiker who was literally never seen again after this happened and virtually vanished without a trace. The following is not my own story but my father's so I'm going to share it to you how he's explained it to me. So, my father worked as a fire ranger for quite a long time, and this is his story. So basically, he was on duty as usual, and this often meant much time on his own out in the wilderness, something that he didn't really have a problem with. He was constantly on lookout for fires or even the slightest signs of one. He said that earlier in the day he had a strange feeling that something was about to happen but he couldn't quite figure out exactly what it was and he was never able to shake the feeling. Well, it gets to night time which actually makes it a lot easier to spot fires and just off to a bridge that my dad's familiar with, he spots the signs of fire. You can see a flame but weirdly it's joined by a few others. What's the most strange of all is that they all seem to be moving slightly. Now this seems odd, it's clearly not a natural fire, and it doesn't appear to be somebody starting one as the fire's not grown, so my dad just watches very intently with the binoculars. He said he does this for a good minute or so before he decides that he should probably head down now and investigate what is actually happening. He says as he's walking closer and closer to the site, he can hear a strange kind of chanting. He can't really make out any words, but he's unsure whether he's gone across some kind of Native American thing that he didn't know about, and maybe it's a residual haunting or what it is. But then he takes a look closer with the binoculars. He can see a group of about 10 or 12 people, all dressed exactly the same, chanting, standing in a circle with their torches. My dad very quickly turns around and gets back up into the station. He quickly reports in what he's seeing and then makes a report to the police. The police showed up about 30 or 40 minutes later due to the distance that they had to cover and of course they were long gone by the time the police got there. They still went out to investigate and they found the remains of multiple animals and animal blood everywhere in that area. Now what's strangest of all is that they found rotting blood on a piece of paper, we know you're watching us. And after that, my dad quit that area immediately and didn't work as a ranger for a good number of years. He still has no idea to this day who they were or how they could have possibly spotted him in the darkness. He doesn't know how long they knew he was watching them for or whether they knew he was in the tower but he said he's never felt as confident being out there since as he did before this happened. A few years ago, I loaded a bunch of camping gear onto my bicycle and spent the better part of the next seven months riding 5,300 miles around much of the US. At night, I most often preferred to wild camp, simply finding somewhere to disappear to into the woods, somewhere people are unlikely to find me and even less likely to care that I'm there. After a month or so of sleeping in the woods, I'd grown quite accustomed to the many nighttime sounds of the forest. The drowning of thousands of crickets and toads was a certainty, becoming almost a kind of white noise in the end. Now perhaps, maybe. I'd camp near a babbling creek or something similar. But it was always the highlight of the night. Though not particularly uncommon to hear the yipes and howls of distant coyotes. 
I fondly recall one night I inadvertently set up camp right between two owls who spent much of the night hooting back and forth, and at the very least, it wouldn't take much of a breeze to stir music from the trees. But then, there was one night in late September in the mountains of rural Montana shortly after dusk. I had turned out my light and lay down in the bed before coming to a disturbing realization. It's dead silent. There's no animals to be heard anywhere, not a single cricket. There wasn't even the slightest breeze through the trees, and this is in early autumn. There was just nothing to hear at all. It was terrifying. I can only describe it as the loudest silence I've ever heard. It almost felt as though the entire forest was hiding from an equally silent predator. There was the occasional snapping of a twig near my tent, a common sound normally lost in the canopy of other noises. It's like a gunshot. I slept terribly that night, and it was incredibly relieving to hear a bird song accompany the first light of dawn. Now, I'm pretty much an accomplished outdoorsman. I'll be honest though, I still have a bit of anxiety when camping wild. I've had a few other similar nights in mind which inspire uneasy feelings, but none that really compared to this one. I think the weirdest part of it all was truly the not knowing. So there was this old lighthouse at the park I worked at as a ranger. People from North Jersey might actually be familiar with such. Next to it sits our visitor centre, formerly the lighthouse keeper's quarters. Last summer, I got put on the graveyard shift for a pay period. While out tooling around the fort, Park is an old army base around 2am, changing all the Pokemon gyms to Team Mystic. So basically I noticed there was a light on in the second floor of the quarters. One of the interp rangers must have forgot to turn it off, I said to myself. So I go to head in, do a quick sweep of the building and turn it off. I go back outside get in my car and I'm about to drive away. When I look back to the second floor, the light is back on and something moves across the window. My mind's eye saw a human figure, but I noped out of there so quick that it could have just been a bat or something, but I guess I'll never know. So, I was looking for new, out of the way fishing holes. If I'm on a trip and have my gear, I'll pull out a map and look at different connecting waterways and try to find back roads that lead to new spots that few people know about. On one trip about 10 years ago, I'm in Western PA and looking for a road to connect me with this small and out of the way stream that I found on the map. I'm in the country. It's not too desolate, but the houses are definitely getting further and further apart and looking more and more beat up. I summarise that I am really close to where this stream is supposed to be, so I turn down a dirt road that leads towards a tree line in the direction that I believe the stream is. The road starts out okay, but as soon as I pass into the tree line things get weird. It's mid-afternoon, but the canopy of trees is so thick that it suddenly looks like it's dusk. The roads are very desolate, and start closing in and eventually vanish. There are banks on either side of me, so I'm trying to figure out some kind of way around, seeing if there's a kind of old logging road or something that barely gets used. Now this road that I'm on keeps on getting worse and worse. Large rocks start appearing at random spots in the road, first sporadically and then more frequently. It's very unnatural looking. It looks like they were placed on purpose. Now my car's a four wheel drive, but I'm getting a little worried because the rocks are getting larger and combined with this, how tight the road is, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. I'm now driving very slow to not pop a tire or make a wrong move and get stuck on the bank or something. The road suddenly takes a very sharp left hand and downward turn. I creep along this turn, but as I see the road continuing to do this weird trajectory, I get worried. At this moment, my gut starts talking to me and telling me to turn around, but 
It's at this point I realise I can't. The road is not wide enough to do a three point turn. I could chance it, but I don't want to get my front end caught on something, pushing over the bank or my back end going off in the other direction. I say to myself, just keep on going. There's going to be enough room. I'll be able to turn around quickly. As I make my way round, there seems to be a side road that I should be able to take. But then I notice something odd. It just looks like garbage, bottles, boxes, wrappers, etc. Then I start seeing toys, kids toys and lots of them. An uncomfortable amount. Then I start seeing clothing. Some old looking and some more modern. They're very weathered and tattered. The amount of clothes I'm seeing actually increases and then I start to see mattresses. Not one random mattress but lots and all over the place. They are dirty with dark stains on them. My gut is now screaming at me to get out of here and turn around while I can. While I'm sitting there trying to figure out my next move, I get the feeling that I'm being watched. The feeling then hits me and I audibly yell out no. I then slam the car in reverse, dodging all of the random rocks and stuff on the way back now and out of the sharp turn until eventually it levels out again. I say god screw this and risk making the three point turn. My back end goes slightly off the bank and I slam back into drive and throw myself forward onto the road and out of whatever the hell I just discovered. I have no clue what I come across that day but I guess the best case scenario is it was some kind of drug then but god knows, I still get shivers thinking about it now. So, not my story but my dad's. First off, let me explain that my dad is a huge skeptic. He was a military man for most of his life and doesn't really scare easily. When he was young, my grandparents sent him off to military school. He would grow up there and truthfully spend a lot of time out in the woods around the campus. He and his friends would drink in the woods and camp. So one particular night around the fire, the guys are telling ghost stories and trying to scare each other. The guys laughed off the spooky stories but my dad said everyone was just a little spooked. Of course no one admits it. So they put out the fire and packed up for the night. The campus was at the top of the hill and the woods are at the bottom. The guys start heading up the hill when my dad felt everyone behind him stop. So my dad looks up to the top of the hill and he can make out someone at the very top, standing on the inside of the fence about six feet tall. This thing's head was resting on the top and its arms were hanging over it, almost like it was just resting on it while watching the guys make it to the top of the hill. They all froze, at first they're like oh god. We got caught sneaking out. Then one of my dad's buddies yells out, Hey, we're just checking out the campus, sir. Thinking it's a drill sergeant, maybe. But no response came. Well, we're all screwed here, my dad thought. As they get about halfway up the hill, my dad said the hair on the back of his neck stood up. The thing literally hasn't moved or responded whatsoever. It's just stayed there perfectly in place. When all of a sudden it screeched, my dad said it sounded like a mountain lion which they have in the area but it was clearly coming from this thing. It started to climb the fence which it did with ease like a spider. The guys wasted no time whatsoever back into the woods screaming and trying to push each other out of the way. My dad hid in a tree with a buddy and the other guys hid in some bush by the creek. They actually stayed there until the sun came out. My dad said the night was sleepless. They heard branches breaking all night and the same screeching as before. My dad said it is the most scared he's ever been. The guys never really talked about it and they all agreed what they saw was the same thing. He told me this story once and I could tell how scared he was just by the manner of which the story was told. So. I went camping with a friend in an area of British Columbia with grizzly bears, black bears and cougars. While sitting at the campfire after sunset as it's getting dark, we heard a sort of grunting slash growling noise coming from the bushes not far from our campsite. 
We ignore the first one or two, but after the noise kept occurring every couple of minutes, it had our attention. We went to look around to see if we could fully identify what was making the noise and hopefully scare it off. The noise then continued for a few minutes and eventually becomes louder. We assume the source of the noise is coming closer to us and the adrenaline is pumping now. It's worth mentioning that we all had a knife on us each, as we'd forgotten to bring bear spray and don't have any guns. The next thing we know, we heard a sound from behind us which I can only describe as an entire tree getting ripped off the ground, split in two, and thrown again. Then dead silence. We sprint and climb to get back in the car, peeing ourselves honestly, so scared, peering out into the darkness trying to spot any movement but we don't see any. We never saw a glimpse of whatever made that sound, and the next morning we searched intensely, but can't find any signs of what could have caused this. I still have no idea what it was to this day. So I was walking part of the Appalachian Trail. I come around a corner and see a mum of black bear playing with two cubs, no biggie. I just turn around and go back. I go back around the corner to see the other cub scrounging around on the trail and suddenly I realise that I've become in between both the mama bear and her cubs. Train is too rough to leave the trail, I have to go another way, I might have to jump off a cliff to get away from this. I climb a small cliff and wait for the bears to leave. Now at one point they're literally 30 feet away from me eventually wandering off. I have to sit there for over an hour to wait for my heart rate to come down, and I always carry bear spray with me now. I was like 10 or 11 and was in the middle of the woods behind my grandpa's ranch with my two cousins. It was just after lunch and it was light out. We were poking at a dead animal with some sticks when we saw an alien or some kind of monster. I don't know what the hell it was. It was white and had big eyes and tilted its head very slightly when we saw it. I was too busy screaming and running for my life to get a good look at what it was but that's what I saw, just kind of crouching there by the big trees staring at us and all three of us saw it. We got back to the ranch and we were all crying and screaming so my uncle took his shotgun and told us tell him where it is. I didn't want to go back there and neither did my little cousin but my older cousin agreed as long as he could get a shotgun too. So we went back there and of course there's nothing there. Nobody believes us and to this day my uncle insists that we must have seen some kind of animal but there is no way that's possible unless it was a deformed hairless monkey. It didn't look like any of those grey or green aliens really. It was kind of triangular, and the eyes were round. The closest thing I can think of is kind of like a praying mantis. But it was the size of a small child, and its eyes are pure white. Now, I didn't see any limbs or anything like that, but I can remember just how weird this thing looked and it had a really big head and smallish torso. I don't know what this is, but even thinking of it now freaks me out. Oh, how it feels to be lost in the middle of nowhere with no idea where you are or how to get back. So, I'd like to share you my story. Now, my father was a park ranger and apparently his dad was too, so my father and grandfather would often lecture me on the dangers of being out in the middle of nowhere by yourself, and how you have to be so careful because you don't know who's out there or what could happen. But, me being a younger kid at the time, that did not bother me one bit. My mindset was, well, the further out into the woods I go, the more chance of adventure there's going to be for me. So. I'd always like to go wandering off a little further than where I was supposed to go. You know, just kind of like typical kid stuff I guess. But looking back on it now, it's much much stupider. And of course, I was kind of blind to any stranger danger at the time. But 
I digress too much now, so I'd like to get to my story. Now this isn't set in a beautiful picturesque summer's day, no, this is set in the middle of a cold October month in winter. Now at the time I'd finished school and I wasn't working and to be honest I didn't really know what I wanted. I used to work in some more old shops somewhere. It was basically a big surplus store and I really liked the owner and got on with him well there. I worked with him for a little while but I had to quit because it was god. I can't put into words how bored I would get if I was in the back room on my own. I'd have to do work in there for 2 or 3 hours at a time. The thing was, customers would come in the front but nobody would really want to talk to me, so I'd get really bored. Now my grandparents kicked up a riot when I wanted to quit. They kind of still had the more older mindset that you have to keep a job, you don't know how quick they're going to come but god. Working for $6 an hour, or less I think, is not worth it. Especially once you finish school and you really want to have a good time. So yeah, I basically didn't know what I wanted. I wasn't really a big fan of what was being offered in school, and I'd been to the college open day things, but it really put me off to be honest. The things they were showing me looked incredibly boring, and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. So. Having my adventure walks was one of my favourite things. I guess now it probably was out of pure boredom, but at the time it was the opposite. I eventually did become bored of being out in the woods on my own because after a while you kind of need more company, but it's what I did at the time. For me it was probably a good thing going in more winter months because I could kind of get away from everyone, and at times that was just what I wanted, just to be away and with myself for a while. So, I say bye mum, I'm going out and she says please promise me you won't be too far but you have to be back in time for dinner. I say yeah don't worry I won't. That was no issue. Whenever my mum made my dinner it would always be too hot so I wouldn't always end up eating at all. So I set out. I go across a small stream and I'm walking along a lake not far from where I live. Now the tree lines are absolutely beautiful here and you have to be quite careful not to fall in the water. I have my raincoat on because yes, you guessed it, it's raining a lot now. And I just take a few seconds just to appreciate how beautiful the rainfall is onto the lake. I always used to think when I was younger these were some kind of animals and my dad would used to joke that it's some kind of fish trying to get air and me being stupid would believe him and beg him to go fishing to try and catch some of the fish. I'd even put my hands in trying to capture things and my dad would just laugh. Yeah, sometimes he could be quite funny like that. So, for this particular adventure, I don't really have a direction. I just kind of wanted to get away from everything and the responsibilities of life, you know. I say that, it's not really like I had many back then, but God did it feel like it for me. So, I continue walking while carefully avoiding different puddles and things. The leaves were kind of like a dark orange or red colour I guess, and most of the trees themselves were barren of life. It kind of set a tone. It wasn't too far away from Halloween and I actually kind of felt like it was a bit of a famed walk so I guess it was good. So just to the left of me is this beautiful lake, and to the right is a more dense forest. I eventually say goodbye to the lake as I continue on my walk. I'm basically following one of the streams uphill a bit, which is a direction I don't usually head in. Now the only annoying thing about doing this is that I got really wet really quick because of the water. Now as I continue up, I'm careful not to slip and fall on any of the mossy rocks. I eventually make it back up onto a big path, which I know sometimes people like to jog down, but not very often. It's quite a muddy track now, and I have to duck under the trees which annoys me because I already have quite bad posture, even back then. The low hanging branches keep slapping me in the face too which is really annoying, but I continue. I decide to take a turn off of the normal path when going to the woods themselves a bit, I mean actually off the path. I eventually come up to a small bridge that I need to cross over and this should lead me slightly further away from people. 
just to the left of me is a continuation of the stream and the riot and I take a few seconds just to take in how beautiful everything is here. I continue and I start to press quite deep into the woods. Now it's not dark but I guess because of the clouds stopping any light piercing through it's starting to look quite dark. But I know I've still got quite a good few hours of daylight which is important because then I can be back in time before my mum gets me. Strangely, I notice a very bright orange tree up ahead of me. This is far brighter than any of the other ones I've found around me, which I think is quite odd. Then I notice there's a few more like this, but I don't think much of it. I take a while to appreciate and I think to myself, God I'm so lucky to be out here and away from everyone. I guess my mind kind of gets lost into the overthinking patterns, where I'm trying to think of what to do what not to do and what to chase. I know that I'm definitely on a different path from most people, but I don't know, I kind of just feel a bit like, uh, I'm not sure what I want to do with school, and I don't really want to study, but there's not much for me to do. I don't find much of anything interesting, really. I had a couple of friends at the time, but they really weren't the greatest, and they weren't necessarily people you could ask for advice. If you wanted advice about one thing, you get told something else which would probably make your situation worse. Or sometimes when I would speak to my best friend, he would just ramble on and on about himself and he wouldn't have paid any attention to what you said. He would literally wait for you to finish your sentence before immediately talking about himself and it just kind of made me feel a bit trapped in my head. I didn't really want to talk to my parents about it. I kind of felt better about talking to my friends but like I said I wouldn't really get much back in return. So yeah, here I am now kind of getting lost in my own mind a bit, going deeper and deeper ever so little into the woods without realising it. Now a good indicator of being far away from normal is the fact that I haven't seen anyone. The rain will usually do this but not to this degree. This was actually quite rare to be honest. Again, I think this is odd, but here I am. So at this point, the rain started to slow down a little bit, which is quite nice, but I keep on getting hit in the face by random bits of water that are falling from the trees. Now weirdly, I come across an abandoned road that I've actually never seen before. It's weird because you can tell this has been abandoned for a long time, but there's definitely no cars that have been on it recently, but why have I never noticed it? I think this is odd. It's kind of like more of a dirt road, but it's weird, it just looks really out of place. Now at this point, I'm walking through some trees that have more life to them, and I guess they look really pretty compared to everything. And once again, I begin getting lost in my mind. Now when I'm walking, I realise every so often that there's a strange flash of light just coming from the right side of my eyes. Now, I'm actually quite paranoid that maybe I've got some kind of mega migraine coming on or something's wrong with my eyes. It seems like it's during every second step that I notice this weird flash of light. I try my best to ignore it and continue walking, but I can't seem to. It's really bizarre, it literally is like if I step down hard enough it does something, I don't know, maybe nerve related and causes my eyes to go weird. It's strange because when I decide to remain completely still, I can't really see much of anything. Everything is completely normal, and there's no flashes, so I continue with my walk. But every so often, I'm struck with that flashing light again, and it's actually starting to annoy me a bit. I think, oh god, well now, I've already had quite a bad issue with my vision before and I don't really have the best eyes. So I truly don't want things to get any worse for me. But every so often, I'm convinced I'm seeing a strange flashing light coming out the right side of my vision, and it will not stop. It's bizarre too, because even if I try and stop and replicate the steps I was doing, there's no flashes now. But hey, this is a problem to worry about if it persists, I tell myself. Though in the back of my mind, truthfully, I'm a little worried. 
Now, eventually I make it up to a really nice spot not far from a beautiful body of water and I take a few seconds just to sit here. I've realised now that I'm truly not sure where I've gotten to, but up ahead of me I see a small kind of man-made bridge thing. There's no water running under the bridge, but you can see that these stones have been arranged specifically for you to go somewhere. This is really odd because there's no trail path up here and I haven't seen anyone at all so nobody else is up this way and just ahead of it you can see a path. This is strange because again it kind of looks like a path someone's made but it looks like no one ever goes up here. Now just off to the left of me I can see a strange figure just off in the distance somewhat behind a tree. It's really bizarre, but they seem to sink slowly down into water, and I can't tell what it is. I think this is probably just a tree or something, so I just continue onwards. I'm walking now, splashing into the water. I don't care because my shoes are very waterproof, but as I'm doing so, every so often that flash comes back again. This time it's dead ahead of me. Now this is really odd now. There shouldn't be any flashes in front of me, and the problem I had earlier is out of the right corner of my eye, in my peripheral vision, not directly in front of me. But every time I stop and strain, I can't see anything or anyone. Bizarre. Convinced that there's something wrong with my eyes, I decide that I'm just going to see what's up here, then I'm going to head back home. Now while walking, I can see the abandoned remains of a campsite from long ago. It's a tent which has all holes in it and it kind of looks like an old military issue one, but somewhat older. It's quite bizarre being there, it looks very out of place and there's not really any signs of any life around here. I'm definitely going up to something that somebody used to live in, but I don't know who or why. So I just keep going. Now, while I'm walking, I slip slightly and have to grip a tree quickly just to steady myself. As I do so, I look up and there seems to be quite a large abandoned house up ahead of me. I can't really see it well, but it's basically in a different direction that I'm heading. I decide to go and investigate because why not? I then take my first few steps in that direction and I hear a click sound now. It's not really like anything you'd be worried about, but it's quite a weird sound. It sounds like plastic being pressed down upon, but again, I don't give it much thought. I'm kind of just blinded to my problems ahead of me with my vision, thinking, oh god, am I going to lose some of my sight or what is this? And I start to panic a bit. Sometimes I can overthink about the smallest details and that's basically what's happening but I'm trying to put on a really brave face now. I continue walking and there it is. It's not as big as I thought it was but it's kind of like a big old cabin house thing. I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't look like anyone's been there recently but there is a small muddy path that leads up to it. And I've come this far, so who am I not to continue on my adventure? So, I continue walking, this time sloshing in the leaves next to the path. I don't want to get my shoes too muddy even though they're waterproof because they're brand new pretty much, so I continue onwards. Now every so often, I can see some kind of marking in the trees. It's almost like wooden carvings that almost look like they're there naturally but you can tell they aren't. There's lots of lines and crosses on them and this is weird. It's something I've not seen before. You can also see a rock formation that seems to channel some water stream down that's definitely man-made. I start to think maybe I've come up to some old loggers cabin and this is what they were looking for. Water. I don't know it seems pretty bizarre. As I get closer and closer to the structure ahead of me, I have a feeling that maybe just maybe there's someone in there. I don't think it's entirely likely however, and I continue going up to it, so I edge 
ever closer to this thing, not really thinking much of my surroundings. I eventually make it just outside of this cabin thing and I just stand there for a moment, confused about what I'm seeing, and then my dad's voice kicks in my head. Son, what are you doing there? What have I told you before? I think God. Is this my dad really speaking to me or just my conscious? I look around and realise it's just in my mind and my dad's advice has really struck to me now. I know I probably shouldn't explore this, but I've come this far now and I don't even know how to get back. Plus, if I ever wanted to go back to this place, it'd probably be really difficult to find, so... I decide that it's best for me to go on. I make my first few steps towards the porch area, and... I try and look through the windows, but it's quite hard to see into this place. It's really quite a nice building, but it's gotta be probably 70 years old or so. It looks quite dated, and I just hope that the door opens. I give a quick hello, quite loudly, and I actually knocked on the door, half expecting somebody to open it, but nobody does. I think this is good because it's a sign I should be able to go in here without having too many issues. So I go ahead and try the door. Surprisingly, it does actually open, just a bit. I have to force my way in somewhat, and I take my first step in. I go to call out again but I stop myself thinking, if someone's in here they've definitely heard me, but nobody's replied. I'm then met with a really weird smell, one that I've not really smelt before and it's absolutely disgusting. It smells like somebody's put tons of waste into one area and burnt it, then repeated the same process 20 times. It was awful. It actually makes me put my shirt over my nose just so I don't have to smell it. Honestly, it was so bad. Now, this place looks like it's been abandoned long ago, but strangely, there's some signs of life. There's a kettle and other cooking utensils that don't look so dirty like the rest of this place. And there is a mattress and a bed in another room, but I don't bother going through there. Now, the smell seems to get worse as I head into the hallway. I then realise that the steps going down, and there's lights on strangely at the bottom, just enough to illuminate the bottom of the stairs. Again, the sense of adventure takes over, and my dad's voice is screaming in my head to get out of there, but I don't do that. I just continue on. Now. I take my first few steps and I have to be careful because my shoes are wet, so it makes me start to slip a little bit and I steady myself. I now realise what I'm looking at. There's a little tunnel system just ahead of me. Now, it's a very tight squeeze, but there's light coming from it, and I go for it. Now, the floor's pretty dirty but very dry, and the gap's not very big. I can just about fit through it and I'm not really that big, I'm still slender to this day, but I kind of worm my way through. I'm actually becoming quite claustrophobic but managed to calm myself down, and I eventually squeeze through the gap. I steady myself up and I look around and, honestly, I'm still not sure what to think of it now. There's a really large basement area that it opens up into, and it's not what you'd expect to find. No storage or boxes, no spare bedroom, no boiler system, no nothing. There's a very dated laboratory, with all kinds of different specimens and things in dusty old jars that I can't really see well into. There's all kinds of chemical and things in vials everywhere. And strangely, there's no bad smell here, just the smell of chemicals. Now, it must have been powerful because I can smell everything through the sleeve of my shirt that's covering my nose. Now, this is really bizarre, it literally looks like some kind of mad scientist laboratory underground, but why would it be hidden like this? I don't know. Now, I quickly go to switch sides of what's covering my face from my right sleeve to my left because I want to open another door I can see, and as I do so, 
I'm suddenly struck with that smell once again. That disgusting smell which is more powerful than the chemical smell that I'm feeling right now burning through my nose. It's coming from the door ahead of me. I take one step closer to the door and I look behind myself. There's definitely nobody else here, right? I take a step closer and I put my hand on the door and crash. There's a loud sound from above me. I have to hit my arm to stop me screaming. I immediately withdraw from the door and stop dead in my tracks. I can hear something or someone walking around up ahead of me. Oh god, you're really in trouble now. There's no way that I'm going to go through that door that I put my hand on before, but I'm certainly trapped now. I stop absolutely dead still for god knows how long, and I don't hear any other sounds. It now dawns on me that I probably shouldn't stay in this room for too long because of the chemical smell, and that I also need to try and get out without making any sound. I've become as quiet as I possibly can, and I slowly take one step forward. I slowly begin to crawl and make my way through that gap. I continue to until I'm almost at the end of it and I hear a door close above. Oh good, someone must be leaving I think to myself. I then push myself clear and start slowly making my way towards the steps, being as quiet as possible. I take my first step on and it makes a slight creak sound. I stop immediately, so angry that there's no way I can get up here quietly. I realise I'm going to have to wait it out now and hopefully this person is gone, whoever they are or however many there are. I wait for probably an hour but realistically 15 minutes because of the adrenaline and I start to make another step up those stairs. I must have only got about halfway up when there's another loud creak. I realise now I don't really have the option to move back. I turn around and I'm sure I can hear the door creak from in the other room that I didn't open. Half expecting some kind of zombie to come out and come and get me, I start to power forward and get ahead, just making it to the top of the stairs. I take a look around and there's no one luckily. I'm frozen in place but absolutely aware of the sounds coming from behind me. I then slowly make my way to the front door and carefully close it behind me. And that's when I hear it. A kind of scream sound that I've not heard before. I can't figure out the direction that it's coming from, but I then realise that there's something just up on the tree line. It's a very dark figure. I've realised that it's a person with extremely disgusting clothes who looks impossibly tall. He was probably about 6 feet 4 or 5, but to me at that age was an absolute giant. I say, hey, um, and again there's that scream sound. I realise this is someone I can't reason with, and that's when he starts running. Without making another sound, I can see his lanky silhouette beckoning towards me with something in his hand. I'm frozen in fear until eventually something kicks in and I bolt into life. I have no idea what direction I'm going in, but I know I have to get away from this person. Suddenly, it becomes clear that I need to get out of here and I start sprinting into the woods. Now the problem is, I'm no longer on a path, I don't know what direction that I'm heading in, and I'm being hunted. I glance over my shoulder quickly, and I start crying a little bit. I can't see this person just yet, but I can see the cabin. I start sprinting and slowly making my way across different puddles and things, trying my best not to be heard and not to be seen. I can see more of the strange markings on the trees, and as I'm on my journey, I can see something just off to the left. It looks like another campsite, but this one's covered in bags. 
and that smell hits me again. Even at my most fear, I still realise how disgusting this thing smells. I eventually realise that I've come to an area where the trees are going to be really difficult to pass and this area is very steep and probably really going to slow me down. I'm frozen for a second and I look to my left and see a lake. There's a dated sign that says danger, deep water. I've realised I can't go this way. I look back and I can hear him screaming again, not far away now. I can't see where he is, but he definitely knows where I am. I've realised that my only option is to try and go up this steep hill, and I basically have to kind of swing from tree to tree to make it up here, half slipping the whole time. I scream, who are you and what do you want? And there's silence now. Annoyingly, the sounds of the rain are basically covering up whoever this is chasing me, or however many there are. I've only seen one so far, but I have a feeling there might be more people. I make it up to kind of a flat area, and I have to catch my breath for a few seconds. Just as I'm doing so, there's that flashing again. I've realised now that it's probably the flash of a camera, and something is definitely going on here. I don't know if this is the same person chasing me as before, but my god is it weird. Now I know that somebody was taking pictures of me earlier, or at least that's what I think it is, or maybe it's my eyes going bad, but I don't know. I luckily make it to a more downhill area now that I know I can pick up the pace on, and being slender comes as an advantage in this situation because I can basically dart in between the different trees. I start saying aloud, I'm sorry dad, I'm sorry grandpa, I should have listened to you both. I don't know what I'm doing out here on my own, I'm not a big strong ranger like you, I'm sorry, really thinking these are going to be my last words, crazy thoughts to have at such a young age. I wasn't necessarily annoyed at myself for going on the adventure, just more annoyed for being dishonest to my parents, I thought if I didn't make it I would have hated the fact that I'd lied to them. Now, I can no longer hear the screaming coming from behind me, or see the flashes, so I start to walk a bit slower, desperate to get my breath back and suffering from quite a large adrenaline dump, feeling kind of weird. I keep walking, and I've realised that if I continue going downhill, I should eventually make it to a larger bridge which should be closer to civilization. I start following the edge of the lake, every so often looking behind me. And now at kind of like a light jogger's pace as I start to pick up speed again. I've probably been on the run for a good 20 or 25 minutes, which is an insanely long time to be running and sprinting through a forest going up and down hill. My legs actually feel like they're jelly and I'm really scared that they're going to completely give way at some point and that I'm never going to make it back home. But luckily, just off in the distance is that bridge and honestly it looks like the gates of heaven to me at this point. It honestly felt like I was taken to another world when I saw this and snapped back out of this crazy dream one. I then go as quick as I possibly can for another good 5 or 10 minutes, eventually making it over to that bridge. I'm too scared to look behind me once more. I've realised that my only option to really get out of here now is to wait for a car, and I stick my thumb up like I've seen in the films, and eventually a car stops for me. I quickly jump in, and they ask what's wrong. I say, oh, uh, nothing, I'm just a bit far from home, and I say where you need to take me. And then, the driver just looks at me and says, well, you're a long way from home, but don't worry, I'm heading over that way, I'll happily give you a ride there. And I kind of zoned out and didn't say anything for the next hour or so. I then ask how much further is it, and the driver says about another 50 minutes, and it hits me just how far away I've gone from the area that I knew. I must have been out for hours, but I guess your time kind of gets distorted when you're in a traumatic situation. Eventually, they drop me just off where I can quickly depart and jog the rest of the way home. I say thank you, 
and I do that. I never even caught the name of this driver, but I really wish I did because I'd love to thank them now. They probably ended up saving my life by dropping me off. I just wish and wish I could have told them what happened, but I just couldn't. I was too scared. I eventually got home and surprisingly, had only missed dinner by about 10 minutes so my mum wasn't too angry. Now my mum would have done me for absolute murder had she have known what had happened. And God knows what my dad would have done so. This story remained a secret up until now when I decided to share it. Now, I don't know exactly where the area is. It would be impossible for me to find now as I'd moved town and so did my parents. But my god, I don't know what I discovered that day, but I can only imagine it was either some kind of drug then, or maybe somebody was doing god knows what else in those woods. I just hope to god that nobody else ever had to discover it like me, but I hate how stupid I was for going to investigate. While working as a park ranger for a while, I'd hear stories from some of the other guys about a park ranger who, apparently after passing away, never actually left the forest that he used to patrol. Apparently some nights while some guys were on patrol, they'd see him standing there over the ridge. They'd call out for some of the other rangers, but no one would reply, and apparently when they'd shine their flashlight there, he would be gone. Now, this always creeps me out, but I never really thought too much of it. So during one particular day, I was on a regular patrol, and I just had this strange sense that I had to go for a walk, deep into a part of the forest that I'd never actually been to before. Yeah, I was covering this area, but it's somewhere that I'd never actually been to. And I don't know why, I almost seemed to slip into a trance-like state. It was very bright that day, but it almost seemed too bright, like somebody had turned up the contrast and the ground still looked pretty dark, but anything above it where the light was coming through was honestly blinding. But I loved it. I loved every second of it. This is the best that I'd ever felt while going on a walk before. Honestly, I guess it's kind of what you'd expect to experience if you'd passed away and went to heaven. It was really that nice. Now I kind of zoned out to the different sounds of nature around me, and like I said, I was just in my trance going ahead. I didn't know where I was going, but I just knew that I had to continue. I must have walked for a good 40 minutes or so until eventually I come across this cabin. That's bizarre. It's one I didn't know was there before, but it was probably a ranger station. Again, I had the feeling that I had to go in there. Now I could see from here that this thing was abandoned long ago, but something drew me in and I just couldn't seem to stop walking. So, I continue, and again, I'm taken in the beautiful scenery around me, and I can't get over quite how beautiful everything is. I stop for a moment and just take in the serenity of the moment. It's so nice, it really feels like I'm in a complete different place. The light is bouncing beautifully off everything, and it's given beautiful tones of green that I've not really seen before off of trees. I eventually make it up to the outside of the cabin and I can see this thing is completely empty. But curiosity or this strange feeling gets the better of me and I go in. Now as I open the door, I'm shocked because there's a ranger sitting there. They're facing away from me and I say hey. I'm and I explain my name. It's nice to meet your fellow ranger here thinking it's someone I've not met before. But the stranger doesn't turn around, they just continue sitting there facing out the window. I think this is odd, and I go to open another door. Still curious as to what this is, thinking it's a ranger station that I didn't know about before. And again, it's full of different people sitting there, at desks looking like they're working. I think this is really odd, and I turn around, and the second I close the door, Immediately everything flashes different. It's completely abandoned and doesn't look new like it did just now. There's no one in here. That ranger that I just said hey to was gone. I immediately open the door and the other room's empty. Now my fear kicks in like a bullet 
and I can't remember how I did it so quick, but I do remember running back the opposite way. Now with the cabin long gone, I ran and ran the exact way that I come until eventually I picked up a hiker's pace because of exhaustion. I eventually make it back and I immediately radio in what happened and one of the other rangers says yep, sounds like you met him and they turned off their radio temporarily, switch into a different channel so I can't communicate with them. I still get nightmares about that experience to this day. So I went to visit the Yellowstone National Park last week and decided to take our boat out to the Yellowstone Lake yesterday. This was our free day and the last one where we wanted to end our trip on a high. While we were loading up our boat, going down into the launch pod, there were fishermen from Wisconsin catching trout, cutting them up, and then throwing them back into the lake. So basically this is a government job, aka an angler incentive program to manage the fisheries. One could tell how experienced these men were and knowledgeable about that lake just by talking to them and watching them work in rhythm, as they probably had done so for several years. So basically, these guys know their stuff. So a couple of older, bigger guys were kind enough to help us get onto our boat and get it in where we needed. These guys tell us, be careful, the water has big swells and it's getting windy. In a side conversation, an angler tells my dad about the bodies still lost on the lake and never recovered, including a couple of park rangers. The angler explains the water is too cold and within 20 minutes hypothermia sets in, so again, he cautions us and we headed out anyway. We didn't make it far, 3 to 5 foot swells actually pushed us back in, it was almost as though the angler was expecting our short return. He helped us guide the boat back into the dock and onto the boat trailer. He just smiles and said, I'm glad you're back. It's bad weather out there. I felt I had to give you the background so you could see why I'm so curious about these missing people. Bodies in the lake and the park rangers bodies, all believed to be at the bottom of the Yellowstone Lake. However, I cannot find any information on these missing people and missing rangers. I live in the backwoods of Northern California and had done so for most of my life. I was north of the Bay Area, so with that being said, I have a million weird or creepy stories, most of which can probably be blamed on wildlife, but not all of them. This would have been about two years ago now. I was living in an isolated neighborhood with my parents right at the edge of a thin dry national forest. Anyway, one night I woke up at about 5am to the loud sound and purple light of the garbage truck speeding by. After that I couldn't go to sleep. A few minutes later I got up and started walking down to the kitchen for a late night snack. Out of boredom and insomnia, I decided to go into the backyard. It's unusually warm, dry night for the season and it felt nice to be outside. But something caught my attention out of the very corner of my eye. I looked up to see this huge ball of light in the sky, completely still, just a little bit above the neighbor's roof. I stood and stared for about 30 seconds to a minute and ran back inside completely freaked out. I don't know what this could have been. It was completely clear and in Northern California, which isn't really a place for weather. So I've ruled out a ball of lightning or anything like that and I'm truly stumped as to what this could have possibly been. One day, when I lived in a house near the woods around 10am, I was sitting on my back porch and my dogs with me and all three or four of my cats. I was home alone and it was a quiet weekday and my neighbours gone to work. When I was sitting there quietly on the deck, all of my animals started looking around the yard and panicked and started hiding, like they heard something coming. I just sat there looking around and listening to see what they're reacting to. After several seconds, I start to hear a humming sound. Then it seems to come closer and sounds more like a buzzing, 
By this time, basically all my pets had run and hid, and are nowhere to be found. The sound then moved closer and seemed to be floating in the air, moving at the same time and at the same pace, like a person walking fast. The sound seemed to be steadily moving across my yard, hovering a few feet above my head. As it got closer, the humming and buzzing become more distinct and I could hear voices. It honestly sounded like a big system of voices all talking at the same time. I heard it perfectly clear as it moved overhead past me and the sound faded as it went into my neighbor's backyard. Thankfully it doesn't stop or pause. It took several minutes before my pets decided it's safe enough to come back out from hiding. It was just a weird experience and one that I've never had before. I still feel uneasy thinking about it. And I've never really had a situation like that where my animals have all acted in unison in such a way. So this actually happened to my mum a few months ago in rural Montana. My mum took her dog outside to the potty in the middle of the night. She had a big yard and her dog would go out off the leash. While she waited for her dog, my mum said that she heard a strange whistling. She would have thought it was human, except whatever it was didn't seem to need to breathe. The sounds are continuous. She described it as a combination of every dog whistle you could imagine all at once. She's convinced that some creature was attempting to lure the dog into the wilderness. Luckily, the dog didn't seem to react and returned to doing her business. A few days prior, my mum and stepdad had been rock hounding near their home when they said they saw what appeared to be like a two-footed dog track going across the road that had an eight-foot stride. She thinks that this might have been the work of a dogman the cryptid dog that walks up on two feet. As a child, she apparently encountered weird things like potentially Bigfoot, and she's terrified of this and believes in the existence of cryptics like this. When I came to visit her this summer, she would not let me take the dog out after dark, and she would not do it either. She was very frantic and empathetically made me promise not to go out after sundown. There were several strange occurrences at her home over that summer that I saw myself. She is still freaking out over this, and she said about some other experiences that she's had that she'd like to shed light on. I'm going to probably share these in the future. So here's a little less backwards, but certainly more country roads of a paranormal event. Every summer, my family and some close friends of ours would all travel up from Southern California to the Eastern Sierra Nevada mountains along the California Nevada border to the town of Bridgeport. If you've ever been here, it's a super cool area. Big biker route to Ronio Tejo, excellent outdoor camping and hiking into Yosemite high country rich in wildlife crazy old history with native tribes and the gold rush of the west has pretty ghost town nearby and one of my favorites is the world-class trout fishing now the town is small and to be honest by your typical 20 building main street usa to match the fill all surrounded by rivers lush meadows with cattle and horse ranches and absolutely gorgeous wooden snow-capped mountains we'd often camp up by some lakes there were actually twin lakes just about 10 miles out, but always made a good point to get to town for dinner at this pizza bar and whatnot. So one night we do this, and afterwards, we're on our way back to the camp at twilight, just light enough to make out the peaks on the horizon, but still densely dark with billions of stars out in force. Now this road back to the camping area would zigzag through the square cut properties of Ranchland, it's a narrow two lane edged by barbed wire with an irrigation channel and minimal street lights if any at all. Literally, can only think of one installed by the dude on the ranch there. So we basically drive back to camp having to use our brights due to the dark and making sure to keep an eye out for deer. And when we finally pull into camp, my mum immediately says, do you see that kid in the dark serum suit on the other side of the road? Perplexed and a little amused, I say, no, where? 
On the side of the road near the cows, he's shirtless walking along the road. I've been driving behind her and my dad. There is no way I could have missed this had somebody actually been there. Nobody in our car saw him, and my dad said that he actually didn't either when she initially saw him. Which not really shocking from my dad though. However, also not shocking would be my mum seeing something paranormal. It always seemed to follow her, and she was dead serious, even describing the colour of the shorts, hairstyle. She said he was walking the same direction that we're travelling, so she couldn't see his face, but he had to be in his 20s. So we half jokingly jumped to the conclusion that maybe in fact it was a ghost. After all, it was dark and late. Nobody else had seen him, and eventually in the summer in the Sierra, it's actually at a great enough elevation and crazy enough with weather to be able to actually kill the unprepared person, especially if they're out there or in swim trunks. On a clear night in August, I've woken up in the teens for temperature, and the way she was describing this is literally in the middle of nowhere in those fields. It takes us about 20 minutes just to drive at a good speed, let alone walk, but I guess anything's possible. The next morning we get up to learn my idiot friend has basically gone and left the caller out after the rest of us went to bed and a bear got a buffet out of us so we decide we'll make the most of it and go back to town for supplies, some further fishing spots and grab some dinner. This time on the way back to the camp, I'm driving in my front with my parents zigzagging through the fields when all of a sudden there's a bright set of headlights on me. Looking back, I could tell this had to be some kind of lifted truck, like maybe a Bronco or something similar rear-ending up my SUV. So close at times that I thought we were actually going to get rammed. I start to speed up a little at first, but this car actually stays straight on top of me. I'm starting to get annoyed and concerned. After all, this is a two-lane road at night that anyone wanting to pass could very easily and safely do so. And there isn't any area you could really pull over without risking going into a ditch and getting stuck. So I continue speeding up, but I'm getting concerned because I know the hills are coming up and there are deer by the thousand in this area, but the car's light keeps pressing. My wife and then girlfriend and friends start getting a little freaked out, as well as thinking about the backwards area that we're in. And this continues through the fields until I get to the final turn before it goes through the woods. And I get a real heavy feeling, almost like a scream in my head telling me slow down. Do so or I'll die. So I start pressing the brakes hard, fully expecting the truck to ram into us. As I do so, we're coming around this corner. And sure enough, there's a pack of six or so deer in the middle of the road. I'm immediately a little shaken up. It's always a little startling when you see animals out of the dark while driving, especially the big ones, and then it dawns on me, I'm not being blinded by anyone and we definitely didn't get hit. I actually look in the mirror, half expecting to see it's still there, but it's gone. No dust in the rear brake lights from a vehicle pulling off the road, nothing screaming by us in the other lane, and no road for them to have even turned off onto, or whatnot. And then I see my folks come up driving behind us. All of us are dumbfounded trying to figure out what's happened. Or where this person went. The deep clear that we're on actually makes the rest of the drive to camp relatively easy. And adrenaline immediately gets me a bit irritated. So I start ranting off about how stupid this person was. And we could have all died. Now when we get out of the cars, my mum immediately starts giving me the typical parents talk. But... I get even more annoyed when she says I'm silly for taking off like that on such a dangerous road in the dark and how lucky I am to not have got everybody killed and those poor deers and whatnot. I say, well, if that person wasn't riding up behind me, it wouldn't have been an issue. She says, what are you talking about? No one was behind you. Oh, how the tables turned. Luckily, my wife and friends had experienced everything with me and they start chiming in about the truck and I start talking about how I finally had enough and listen to my gut and freezing deciding on slowing down as we just come to find out there's actually deers 
Now from explaining this, it actually gives my mum chills and she apologises to me and told me to be careful next time but she started laughing and saying how weird the trip's been. I'll give this to my mum. She never did call us crazy for what we experienced in life which is something I think a lot of parents neglect to do to their kids. It's funny because I've really always heard similar experiences from country towns east or folklore or ghost trucks or whatnot. But now after experiencing it, my god is it dangerous because you'll react as though there's something physically there, though in reality there might not actually be. I grew up in Orange County, CA, but there were some real wild areas around us, believe it or not. In high school, we went out to this place called Black Star Canyon in Cleveland National Forest. Big densely wooded area of oak that stretches from OC to San Diego almost to the border, even contains Marine Corps Base Pennington. Anyways, we had always been told it was haunted while growing up. Turns out, true story was that a tribe was up there that actually got slaughtered in the 1800s by hired fur trappers because they kept stealing the Mexican ranchers' horses for meat. So, we decide that we're gonna go on a night hike to this place being silly. My friends and I did stuff like this all the time, but I considered myself pretty skeptical, and luckily, most of us are pretty level headed. This area is actually pretty well known for mountain lions too, so we're all on guard and in agreement to turn around at any sign of one, just even if we're unsure. So, the way the trail works, you park at a forestry gate and start to walk along an old asphalt narrow road that's mostly dirt from when there was fast houses in the 50s and 60s before the floods actually washed them out and the land was committed to NFS. Eventually, it actually turns to a full hiking trail. Along this road is a line of barbed wire, as well with all kinds of signs warning you not to cross. So here we are, typical idiots walking a road on a hardly shivered moonlit area at night, with not even our flashlights to add to the flare. So we're not using them at this point, which I don't know why. Well. As we go deeper and deeper in this adventure, and go further down this road, which we'd never been on mind you, I kept seeing what appears to be a cowboy leaning on the wooden fence posting behind the barbed wire. Just kind of leaning on it distinctly, but not really looking at us too much. I'm taken back because it just doesn't look right, he's just leaning there. It's a silhouette, and I can't really make out much else. I keep telling myself that something here is logical and that maybe it's just my eyes going weird, but I kept seeing this person every 10 or so post, but don't say a thing to the guys. We get to a point where we've been walking for over an hour and debate on heading back because of the time, and my friend goes, yeah, and I kept thinking I'm seeing a cowboy along the fence. I felt myself drop almost, I couldn't believe it. These were plain wooden fences, maybe a typical 4 feet or so tall, with mostly fields behind them. No way that looked like a person, so I opened up about seeing it also and we agreed to turn around. Just then, my buddy starts flipping out, ripping his shirt off and screaming about getting stung. We're all kind of confused and look at him like he's crazy, but he insists it's a bee or something. He's been stung. So we turn out the lights and look at his back and there are three distinct scratch marks from one shoulder diagonal across to his hip, even drawing blood. We were done needless to say after that, but made it back to the car without further incident. You can probably argue that the shadows were a coincidence in the dark, but all of us seeing the same thing is really weird, but throwing in the scratch there which come out of literally nowhere is really weird. So this happened about 10 years ago. My house is in a pasture about 14 acres across. My dogs are outside and I was awakened by their barking. I woke up and froze in pure terror. 
It sounded like something with tremendous power was right over my home. The best way to describe it is like a subwoofer as big as a high school gym, just pulsating out this woo sound. It felt absolutely incredibly powerful. Then, it slowly moved away. I was froze. I didn't even want to look outside, but it left and I went to find my dogs and looked around. Now they were going crazy, so I know it definitely affected them too, and I wasn't alone in hearing it. Never did I see anything which could have caused it, but honestly, this was so powerful, it almost felt as though it could evaporate an entire city. I'm somebody that had been a park ranger for about four years, and one of the strangest things that happened to me wasn't actually during my time being on station. It was actually during a vacation that I had. Now during my vacation, I loved to go up to Alaska. Whenever I had the chance, I'd always love going out there. I mean, truly I was an outdoorsman, so I guess it was kind of second nature for me to be out there, but I also owned a snow cabin out there. Well, I call it as a snow cabin, but I guess it's just a cabin, but you know, Alaska. Now, during one particular trip I went out there, I had a strange feeling that something was going to happen and I just couldn't shake the feeling. I don't know why. Now, this actually happened before I reached the cabin, and to get to the cabin itself, it was actually quite a trek, to be honest. I had to go through the snow for a number of days to actually reach the cabin, but I didn't really have an issue. It was a really remote area, and I love being outside, like I said. Now, when I first made it to the cabin, something just fell off. I couldn't quite describe it, but it was almost like something in the atmosphere was just different. I brushed it aside and had a pretty good day, really, for the first day. Now, I absolutely loved to do reading and journaling, and actually wrote poems. There was a bench that I loved to go to where I'd just sit and write my poems. I would do this and other activities during the day. Now, one time that I was sitting on the bench, I remembered writing one of my poems and reading it back, and as I looked up, I had a strange feeling that somebody was just over my shoulder, now every time I looked there, I couldn't see anyone. I thought maybe something was off and I could have been stalked by an animal or something, so I decided it was best if I just headed back. So I get halfway back and I'm just starting to get out of sight of the bench and I can see somebody sitting there on the bench. I scream out hey hey and they don't reply whatsoever. I realised that I should probably go and grab a weapon if this is actually going to go down, so I quickly head back to my cabin. I come back again with my weapon in hand, but unfortunately they're long gone now. Oh god, I knew I should have just went up to them. Now, it could have been an animal, but mind you, why would they have just went to the exact spot that I was sitting in and looked so human-like? That I couldn't describe. Now that was probably the first strange encounter that I had on this trip that wasn't just my senses, I could actually see something now. Brushing it aside, I thought maybe just maybe it was an animal, or I could have just been seeing things. You know, once you've been in the snow for too long, just staring at wire everywhere, it kind of messes with your head, but this felt distinctly different. And also, I've never experienced anything like it before, so this was definitely odd. So anyway, I put it aside and go to sleep. Now, I'm awoken in the night by some kind of strange call outside. It sounds like somebody trying to make the sound of an animal, but not really pulling it off properly. It's quite hard to describe. I quickly get up out of bed and open the door, which leads to kind of my, my living space, I guess you could call it, for the main part of the cabin. Now, I stop to remain silent for a few seconds, but I can't hear this thing again. Now, once again, I think maybe, just maybe, it's my imagination, but I'm not too sure. So I decide to make sure that I have my weapon at hand, and I made sure that I close the blinds this time, 
because I stupidly left them open before thinking the light would be a nice way to wake up naturally. But now I realise it's probably a stupid idea. But this sound is weird. It doesn't really sound like an animal that I know, but it's hard to put my finger on. So anyway, we got a few more days without anything happening and again I'm really enjoying myself now. I'm having a really good time and I slowly go over to one area that I love to go to. Now this takes about a half hour hike away from the cabin and this place is just beautiful. It's up on a little hill but the trees here are absolutely stunning and it's somewhere that I absolutely love to go to. Now on the trek over there, I realise again that something just feels off but again I can't describe it. I don't know why, this feeling keeps on coming randomly, almost like I'm at a heightened sense of danger, almost like I'm psychic to something that's going to go wrong that hasn't just yet. But alas, I continue and eventually get to my spot. Now this is a great spot, I absolutely love to do my writing here, I'm basically just doing some journaling, and I've decided to write down some of the previous events, we're not really detailing them too much because I think, well, I don't want to end up on one of those late night shows about serial killers and they're reading my diaries. Now, wouldn't that be funny if that had actually happened? So anyway, as I'm sitting there, I realise that my coffee's running low and I go to get some more out of my thermal thing. As I turn around, I realise now that there seems to be some kind of footsteps which, on my own, which is really weird, because I know for a fact that it was only fresh snow that had led up to this point, and they certainly weren't my footprints. They kind of half look like animal prints, but not really. It almost looks like somebody wore animal shoes, trying to pull like one of them Sasquatch pranks on people, but a little different. Now the shoe marks are actually quite big, now I have a size 10 feet in US, so I guess this was probably roughly what you call an average American shoe size, but these were kind of animal shaped. It's almost like they've got little hoof markings, but they're not exactly hoofs, so this is really weird. Now my fears come back again, and I decide that I should go, especially because I can truly get lost while journaling, and I don't want to be in that vulnerable state while there's something around that I'm not completely in control of. Because as a ranger, you get taught to be in control of your environment at all times if possible, and I certainly wasn't now. I then start the hike back again, and again, I can't shake this feeling that something's off, though only this time I have something to follow once more. It's not just my senses, I can actually visually see the tracks in the snow. Now what's odd is they don't stop where I thought they would. I thought maybe they would just go off into the woods and it was some kind of animal, but no. These seem to have followed me the whole way. I mean literally, I get all the way up to the door of the cabin and it's virtually like they've been there the whole time. I decide that maybe, just maybe, it was something I had done and I hadn't really realised at the time. But again, this is really odd to be honest and I can't really put my finger on what this could have been. I'm starting to get a little paranoid now and I'm convinced that there's some kind of animal that's following me. Oh god, nice. Now this is something to be concerned about. There may have been an animal around my cabin that I wasn't aware of. But it's really odd for it to follow people because usually animals won't be predatory and especially for someone of my size that seems very unlikely. Now another week goes by and surprisingly nothing happened and I basically completely forgot about the previous events. So basically I was on one of my last days in the cabin and I was kind of definitely looking forward to getting back while simultaneously knowing I was going to miss the place. There's something about being out there on your own which is really nice, but to be honest after a while the loneliness kind of becomes a problem and your body or brain I guess tells you it's time to head back, and that was happening for me. So I decided once more to return to the same spot where I'd been journaling before and I'd seemingly been followed. Now as I set out walking, I realised what's really strange today is there seems to be a dog. It kind of looks more like a wolf, 
But it's quite hard to say at this point because it's just out of sight. But god, I think this is really strange because I've never seen any out here before. And it would be rare to see one on its own like that. I've realised that it's probably not a good idea to head out now just in case there's more. And god, that makes sense. They were probably hunting me earlier in the week and that was letting my primitive senses take over. I realise now that I should quickly head back and that's what I do. To be honest, the rest of that day was pretty boring. I basically just packed up my things, had some more coffee and just reminisced a bit as my time of working as a ranger and for some other things in my previous life. Now I feel pretty tired and I settle in for the final night. Now before I tuck myself in, I quickly do a scan of the perimeter of the cabin. Nothing seems odd. Everything's normal. And luckily there's some fresh snow so I can actually see around quite a good way and know that there's nothing really following me, so no wolves for now. So with that, I go to bed. Now I must have fell asleep for only about 20 minutes because there's some kind of weight on the edge of my bed. I think it's nothing and just presumed it's some kind of vertigo due to being tired and in a lucid state. But I realise now that it's not. Wondering what it is, I start to move and then, in my ear, I hear, I know you're sleeping. It takes a second for my brain to lag into life and suddenly I realise that that's odd. I definitely didn't imagine that. I quickly bolt up and try and hit the lights but miss it and I can hear something sprinting away. There are footsteps just going outside. I can just about see through my blurry eyes that somebody's just ran through the door. I can't make out much, but it's a tall figure, seemingly inky black. I quickly slam the door shut and grab my gun. I fling on all the lights and I'm slowly waking up, trying to comprehend what's just happened. I realize my feet are wet as I've realized that there's some snow tracks from somebody's shoes, obviously, which have been in my cabin. That thing was real. That did just happen. So angry and scared at what just happened, I bust the door open and scream out, Hey, whoever done that, you better come back here now. I then fire my gun into the air just to scare whoever's around and I scream out, which I probably shouldn't have, you'll be next. I look around and I can't see anything. I take a few seconds and calm down a bit and realise that I can probably use the snow to my advantage. I quickly do a circle of the perimeter but there's no footsteps, literally only my own that I've just made. How could this be? Someone was just here a second ago. I come outside again and I finally find some tracks. You're gonna get it now, I scream, still in rage. I followed these tracks for probably a good 20 feet until suddenly, they just stop. Literally, I have no idea where the tracks went off to, and that was enough for me. I sprint back into the cabin, and I gather up all of my things, and I set out in the darkness with my gun at hand and my finger constantly on the trigger. I go in the opposite direction, which is basically the long way around from where I've seen the tracks, certain that no one's been there because there's no footprints. I'm still trying to calm down and make sense of what happened, and for the next four hours, I trek on, and eventually make it to an area that I can stop. I ended up putting up my tent and sleeping here for a little while, and then as the day breaks, I make my way back to where I can get home. I never went camping out there again, or back to the cabin. I eventually sold the cabin after a couple of years of not using it, and I've been left with more questions than answers, and they're ones that I don't think I can answer or ever will. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing great today and enjoyed these stories. If you want early access to my videos, then make sure you check out my Patreon, and make sure you check out my podcast in the description. I hope you're all doing great and I'll speak to you all soon. So this happened to me when I was around 16 years old. 
I was in high school and living in my parents' ranch home in western Pennsylvania. For several weeks, I would have a hard time falling asleep because every time I did, I would see this freakishly deformed, weird goat creature standing on two legs. It scared me. I had several nightmares of this goat slowly walking towards me. One night, I was absolutely terrified, more so than usual. I decided to get up and use the restroom to see if this is going to help me relax and reset my brain so I can get some sleep. As I exited the bedroom, the living room is off to the right of the hallway, and I just stopped and froze solid. There in the blackness of my parents' living room was a minuscule amount of moonlight shining through the triangular windows, and there's the goat man. He was about six feet tall, menacing and deformed and evil looking. The most messed up part is that this goat man was on his front legs, or arms. I don't know what to call them, but it kind of stood up on its hoof things. Now he was moving slowly, but in a dancing, swaying fashion. I just dipped into my room and closed my eyes and hid under the covers. I couldn't force myself to scream or face it any longer, so I guess I just chose to ignore it. Luckily, I've not seen the creature since. I've told my family about it and they think it's hilarious. They bring it up in conversation as a joke now from time to time because they know it scares me. But I know exactly what I saw, even though I'm 28 now and I still get goosebumps all across my body when I think about this. Now this happened quite a long time ago, so I was quite young at the time, this was in Australia in 2003, and we took a pretty sketchy shortcut home through the edge of a large wilderness area to beat my friend's mum home, so she wouldn't find out that we'd been out roaming late at night. Something massive we couldn't yet see stalked us from a distance, then put on speed when we were nearing the only main turn in the trowel, freaking out. We try and beat it, but not long after my friend stopped and looked back at us. I then did too. We can see the silhouette of a massive head and shoulders just watching us. Its eyes shine red and orange in the moonlight. The thing blended in with the bush on either side of the trowel and stalks us the rest of the way. When we got to the other end, we couldn't breathe and stopped under a street light for whatever reason to make ourselves feel safe. We last saw the thing in the tree line while we were under the light. It looked at us, and then just turned back and went back into the bush and that was it. We spent the rest of the early morning hours googling what it could have been, and found out about the Yoi. So we threw together an average report about it based on the collection of three parts of us remembering. I didn't remember noises or smell, but the other guys did. They didn't remember any of the details of its features, but I 100% saw some texture of fur. Now, I think I've told this story in other places over the years, but it really scared the life out of me being stalked by something like this. Now a few years ago, I went camping for the first time in my life. I was about 11 or 12 and we headed out to a forest nearby our house. We are in Poland for the holidays and right next to our house is a huge forest. So one day, we decided to take out my mum's old tent that she had from like the 90s and just stay there for the night or two in the beautiful wildlife. Good thing. The place we chose to sleep was about 20, maybe 30 minutes away from the house. Bad thing. There's a lot, and I mean a lot of wolves, foxes, boars, out in the forest, and honestly, I kind of regretted going out there in the first place. We saw everything cut around 6pm, and my sister and I set up the campfire. My dad chopped down a smaller tree earlier with his oak axe, and by now it dried out enough to catch fire. We sat around it for some time, probably around 4 hours until it was dark, so we decided that we just had to sleep then. My sister and I on one end of the tent and our parents on the other. Now it was probably just a fear of getting eaten alive by some wolves or some homesickness, but I can't sleep. 
Now, I hear my dad telling my mum that he was going out into the forest to get some wood for the morning while it was fairly dry, or it would have all soaked up the dew by then. The thought of not having my dad around makes it even worse for me to even close my eyes for a second. I'm not good at telling what the time is and I just stare up at the sky, trying to figure out how long it's been so I'll just say around 12 or 1 in the morning. I was actually falling asleep when I hear some rattling outside the tent. My first thought is that it's a wolf. I was terrified so I just popped out and look around. Now I see if it's my dad there. My dad's still gone. It's been about an hour since he went. I lay back down and just tried to fall asleep but when I turned around to my side I saw this faint human shadow outside the tent. I froze and let out a tiny squeak. The person seemed to be holding some kind of axe, shovel type thing in his hand. So I thought that maybe it's my dad back. The shadow then walks towards the entrance of the tent and just stood there and unzipped the door for maybe 30 seconds. I began to wonder why he wasn't coming back inside. The person finally ran into the forest but dropped the axe. You could hear the footsteps fade into the distance in a thump. Now, maybe a minute or two later, I hear my dad walking back from the opposite side of the forest and enter the tent all tired and just fall asleep. Now, it seemed kind of sketchy and fishy and scary to me, but it's so late. I couldn't even think anymore about how I would fall asleep. The next morning I woke up after my dad dropped his phone on his face, letting out an ouch. I peeped through the curtain at him and he just smiled back rubbing his nose. I needed some fresh air because I was feeling a bit sick, maybe from the nerves in the morning or homesickness, I couldn't really tell. Both of us got out of the tent and walked around for a while. We circled around the campsite for about 10 minutes until we come back to the tent. That's when I noticed something that sent chills down my back. A few meters from the tent in the corner of my eye, I managed to catch a glimpse of something red. It took me a hot second to realize I actually saw something and then I turned my head to see what it was and there's a red and black axe. It was not there before. It wasn't my dad's because his was by the pile of wood he collected. Now, from my dad's reaction, apparently I turned pale, looking like I was going to faint. He then turned his gaze to where I was looking and both of us just stared a few seconds before he called out for the rest of the family to wake up and move. We all packed up within an hour and rushed home. I later told my dad that I saw everything and he doesn't believe me. I carried on with the story and he finally realises I was telling the truth. To this day, I have no clue what that was but I'm just happy that he didn't go out to investigate further. Me and a friend of mine decided to go camping one day in the national park not so far from where we lived. I've been friends with this individual for quite a long time and I really trusted him. He wasn't necessarily the best with outdoors types things, but he had a pretty good mind and common sense to danger, so that made it really easy for us to get along with each other and do the ventures which were outside. However, this one particular incident I can honestly never forget about. Let me explain. So we go out into the forest and we're trying to get to our camping site. Things are pretty normal at the time to be honest. We had a beautiful little stream running to the left of us. My friend was keen to go down there and try and catch some fish. Now I should mention that this friend has actually never done fishing before so I don't know why he actually suggested it and I thought it was quite funny because it was a bit of a silly thing to do. We ended up agreeing that it was a good idea for us both to go down there and do so. The problem was it wasn't going to be easy for us to traverse the terrain to actually get down there so obviously this was going to be no easy manner or thing to overcome. We kind of both skidded down and my friend actually got his legs pretty cut up doing this. I don't know why he had shorts on. He literally always wears shorts no matter what the weather is but I guess it didn't matter so much. Luckily I've got some pants on which actually take most of the blows for me so I'm not really in a bad way when we get down there. 
He had a little fishing kit he brought with himself and honestly it's the cheapest thing that I've ever seen. You have to really wrap the reel round as well. I don't know how to describe it but it's kind of like if you had a bit of plastic and just wrapped a fishing line round it. Also we didn't have much bait. In fact we actually lost half of the bait immediately when putting things down and setting up. All that happened was half of it went into the water, some of it got off the reel and we didn't find a thing. That's when my friend tells me, hey, who's that over there? We look up and we can see a figure just off the water staring at us. It looked like a normal person, but wearing clothes which makes it hard to actually see their face. It looks like quite an old person from what we can tell. They slowly fade off into the bushes without saying a word to us and that was weird. We both say that maybe we're not meant to fish here and we quickly pack up everything and try and get away. I didn't really want to spend too much time down here and the whole point of the trip was to try and get away from people. So obviously we're not going to be able to do that with some weirdo watching. So we head up. Now, if getting down was an issue, getting up was a whole different kettle of fish. We're really struggling to get up. My friend also wasn't the most athletic of people, so he's really struggling. He weighs a lot more than me, so I'm also very out of breath from trying to help him get up over the rocks. We eventually do it though. Also I can see that his cuts have dried now, which is a good thing, so we continue on. My friend actually jokes that it kind of looks like we're walking into some kind of horror film, as you can see lots of moss on the trees and everything becoming more and more dense, but I guess it wasn't much of an issue then. We were both quite similar in thinking and we were just talking about much of anything. At this point in our lives we were getting a little bit older but we're fairly young. We thought we knew the world but my god we didn't. But yeah, we quickly forget about the weird person on the lake. Now, eventually we make it much further and we also can't decide exactly where we want to set up our tent. It didn't become an argument, but it kind of become like a stalemate where neither of us could actually find a good spot. My friend then says, alright, I'm going to go off and find a good spot. And you do the same, so I agreed. I ended up going by the river following it, thinking it's an easy way to navigate back. The thing was, we didn't actually check if our phones had battery or if we could actually communicate with each other, so this was the first idea that what we were doing was pretty stupid. However, being the stupid ones, we persist. It's not too much longer that I actually bumped into a park ranger. He was questioning what I was doing out here on my own and I explained that I'm just out here with my buddy and we're trying to find somewhere good to camp. It turned out that he's actually really helpful and suggests a really good place for me to go that we're allowed to be on. He then wants me to tell my friend that I can't be walking around at night like that, apparently it's scaring people. I say, what do you mean? I say, we've only just got here for one day, and he says, oh, sorry. I ask him to elaborate more, but he says he can't say too much about it, but just to watch ourselves out here. So that was great. I thought maybe it was just a person we'd seen earlier, and I described what I'd seen, but he said it's nothing to worry about. He said, did you see anybody fishing? And I said, no. He said, oh, okay, good. I didn't want to let on to the fact that I was fishing. I was actually quite paranoid and decided that later on I was going to bury our fishing gear. I know it's a stupid thing because obviously they're not going to come and search us but I didn't want to get in trouble. He then says yeah so where where exactly has your buddy gone? I then say I don't know I'm going to find him later. He says do you want me to help you locate him? And I say yeah sure. So we start walking back. Now, I'm excited to tell my friend that we've got a camping spot, but I think maybe he's found a better one as we pass through some rocks. That's when we see something. There's some kind of movement up ahead and I think it's my friend, so I call out his name. That's when we're met with a really weird sound. It sounds like the grunt of a wild boar or something, but much, much deeper. It goes on for a few seconds and kind of makes fudding sounds. Me and the park ranger look at each other confused and we go up ahead to see what it is. I start to panic a little bit and think, well, 
Maybe there's something wrong with my friend, and I'm worried that he's got hurt and in trouble somehow now. So we're now moving much, much quicker. However, we eventually aren't able to find him, and I think, well, I don't know. I hope he's okay. I say it out sarcastically, and the ranger looks at me a little bit concerned, which worries me. Now, not too much longer after, he says, hey. And I hear hey back. And he comes out of the woods and says, who's this? He then realizes this is a park ranger, and he starts to apologize. I kind of look at him as if to say, just shut up. Because I realize that he's about to say sorry for fishing and expose us and probably get us in trouble or kicked out of the park. But luckily, the ranger doesn't realize. And we're able basically to go back to normal. Now the ranger says, just be careful out here guys, as he turns around to leave. For some reason, I don't know if it was like a core memory or something, but it really stuck in my mind seeing his kind of pointy hat like that. I was like, you know what, that's one really cool dude, and I then explained to my friend that he's been really helpful to me, and that he helped us find a really good spot. Now my buddy then says, I've got a good one too, but I tell him, nah, just follow this one, the guy knows his stuff better than me. And he agrees and we both head out. We're in a nicer area of the forest now and we're just about to go back to where we were following the opposite direction. We can both see some really nice hills up in the distance that we're excited to be able to trek on in the following day. My buddy then notices something. Up on the horizon you can see the silhouette of somebody moving up and down the hill. Now. We didn't really get too close, but we thought, god, they're like an Olympic runner. But he's moving in some kind of weird dance way, that's the only way I can describe it. Because where we're standing and the fact that this is new territory, we really don't have a good scowl as to what's actually up ahead of us. So we decide just to ignore it. And we continue on anyway. We think, well, we're definitely not going to be moving very quick when we actually get up there. So, we just turn back and go on like everything's normal. Now again, the scenery is beautiful too. The path is actually a lot more overgrown and it makes it more difficult to actually travel here. We're also getting quite muddy. I say we, I mean my friend especially on his lower legs. He has some wipes but he's getting through them at the speed of light, trying to keep his legs clean. And I tell him, no, just wait until later. You're gonna burn through these, just do it later. He then agrees and stops. I don't know why he was doing it. Even to this day, I still laugh about it in my head. But we press on as always. Now we get back to the camping spot and everything's pretty much as it should be. We're both feeling pretty good at the time and start to settle in and get ready to have a good night's sleep. So we put all of our things down and we're both very relaxed in this moment. Now, not too long after we're relaxed, we suddenly realise something's weird. There's some kind of horse sounds outside the tent. It wasn't really too dark at this point, but we don't have much light in us other than the moonlight. It literally sounds like a horse is outside. We unzip the tent a little bit to try and figure out what this is. For some reason, I had some kind of stupid bravery. I opened the tent and I sprint outside making monster noises. I don't know why I did this. No logic was prevailing at this point. A horse is not going to be a horse here. I thought maybe the park ranger come back to play a prank on me or something. I was quite tired and delirious, but suddenly I woke up enough for the fear in my body to come back, and I start sprinting back in the opposite direction. My buddy's actually scared and said, what, what happened? I was actually annoyed at him for just staying there waiting to see if I was okay, but I say, well, nothing. He says, what about the horse? I say, there's no horse. We're out here. How could there be a horse in the forest like this? It was hard enough for us to traverse a train, let alone a big old horse. So yeah, we thought it was really bizarre, but go to sleep. Don't think too much of it. Now we pack up our things the following morning and we go back down to the stream to just have a wash off. The water was ridiculously cold though, so we don't really go much further than just having our ankles in it. It was at this time that it kind of dawns upon us that what we experienced was pretty weird. There's no reason that a horse should have been out there. I mean, God, there's no reason a horse should have been out there, of course not. It doesn't make sense. 
so we continue on and decide to leave the area. We're also worried about the people angry at us for fishing, or that person that we thought had saw us, so we go a bit further. That's when we seem to find what appears to be a bit of a cave system or something with lots of rocks. Now my friend who's quite good at climbing decides that he's going to become Alex Honnold and decides to start climbing, then I tell him to stop instantly. Almost on cue, he slides on some of the moss and really hurt his hand and comes back. It's as we're standing here that we hear a sound again. A deep guttural growl, once again like I'd heard with the park ranger before. Now that was really weird, and guess where it was coming from? Deep in the cave. My friend then says hello in a weird high pitched voice, obviously trying to mock this thing. But, we hear it back again, and my friend's confidence goes down. Mine was already at the lowest it could be. We start to slowly back away, as the growls seem to come closer and closer to where we are, but are still very far into the darkness. We now realise that we're probably not as brave as whatever this person is or thing, so we leave it alone. We also thought maybe it was some kind of injured animal. We think maybe it was a boar or something that just sounded like how a horse breathes that come up to our tent looking for food. We both know how dangerous this could be, so we decide to leave it alone. We don't decide to try and communicate with it. It's so weird. There's no boars around here. There shouldn't be any. The only suggestion we can come up with is that maybe it was somebody's pet who somebody decided that they didn't want anymore. It was weird. So we continue on anyway, still passing through the rocks and the moss and the low hanging trees. The air was quite moist too, so it makes us feel especially hot and sweaty, which isn't very nice. But eventually we come up to a bridge which I know where should be, so I have a relative idea of where I am now. The bridge was quite an old wooden one. It's actually pretty well designed but relatively rickety, so I didn't feel very safe while walking across it. I just felt like it was about to give way at any possible moment that I was on it. We stand on here then stop for a moment roughly in the middle. We're debating if it can take both of our body weights when we hear something. It sounds like a really loud splash in the water below. It sounds like it's right below us, and we try and look over the sides to figure out what this was, but all we can see is this beautiful light blue water rushing under the bridge. That's really bizarre, we think. As we look around trying to locate the source of the sound, but we can't find anything. We now realise how ever so still the air feels, and that there's not any sounds around. It becomes quite creepy. I really felt like I was in danger suddenly, and I don't know why, and I can't tell you why this happened. It was really as though somebody had just dropped me into a frying pan and I knew I have to get out of here. My buddy already started walking away and tells me to hurry up. He's worried that something's fallen off the bridge and we're about to break it. Our combined weight was probably pretty high, it definitely wasn't enough for us to be concerned about the bridge, but it honestly felt like it was about to give way, so we just press on and try not to think about it too much, making a mental note of this being a potential hazard for us. Now eventually we make it up to the next spot where that we need to set up camp for the night. I put the stuff down and my friend says that he's going to go on a walk for a bit just to scout for firewood and stuff. I thought this was a stupid idea because we can pretty much use any of the wood here because it's relatively dry but he doesn't listen. There's also a really nice lake not too far from here so I decide to go over there. It's actually getting quite dark now and I didn't take into account how quick it was going to get dark. The scenery was breathtaking though, there was beautiful plants on either side of me and I felt very very peaceful here. I don't know, I just didn't feel any reason to feel terribly unsafe. I just felt settled, cool, calm and confident. Now I can see my friend by the water, it looks like he's taking a drink from it and I think that's really weird. He's standing under a tree so I can't really see it too well, but it definitely was weird. He was kind of bent over like an animal doing so. As I approach I can see that he's stood up now and slowly makes his way somewhere else. 
I thought it was pretty funny and start smiling to myself like he was just acting weird on purpose and walking with a strange limp. I don't know what direction he went in, but I wanted to just sit by the water for a little while to gather my thoughts. I thought, you know what, if I didn't lose that fishing kit, I probably could have had a really good catch by now and some really good dinner. I remembered what the ranger told me, but for some reason I didn't care in that moment. I just felt a bit more hungry and I was starting to lose my senses to it. That's when I head back. Now I eventually make it back to where my friend is and I say, yeah, you're definitely a wild animal. I then explain what happened and he tells me that no, I was not by the lake. I don't really take him seriously as I rarely can, but there was something in his tone which felt different and kind of got to my core. I thought this was really odd. Now I realise it wasn't him, and I think, well, maybe it's the park ranger. And I ask if he's seen the park ranger, but my friend says that no, he hasn't. Now, for the next part of the story, I'm going to have to go to my friend's perspective. So I basically drifted off to sleep really easily, and I'm pretty happy with this. I wake up, and my friend is gone at some point in the night, so I thought that maybe he went out to the toilet or something. Dreary-eyed, I look out the tent and I'm sure that I can see something with a very tall silhouette standing up with kind of bow-legged feet, and that has a weird pig face. I didn't believe my eyes. It looks like it's wearing some kind of woolen trousers or something, and it's crazily tall. It's probably about 30 feet away or something, but it's just watching from the tree line, and I can hear those boar sounds again. I think I'm extremely tired. I felt it and realised I'm just delirious, so go off back to sleep again. My friend then tells me that he woke up at some point in the night, and he really had to go to the bathroom, so I was right about that. He said for some reason he wanted to see the lake at night, Apparently, he's never seen the lake before like this, so he finds something really peaceful about it. He then tells me that he decided he wanted to urinate in the lake. Don't ask me why. I don't see how this is liberating or anything, but he goes on some stupid rant about how it's almost like the cycle of life. I was actually annoyed because the next day I ended up washing off in the lake before he actually told me this, but he eventually goes there and finishes business. Then, he hears something really odd. He says he can hear breathing coming from behind him. He thought it was me and didn't react and he just slowly turns around. He said he got about halfway back to the tent and had a feeling that something was just odd. And just off. He says that he turns around and I kid you not, he sees a 7 feet figure standing there with what he describes as very bowed legs, looking like it was kind of horse shaped at the bottom. Then having the face of a pig and standing there with very big hands up against a tree. He said he couldn't believe what he was seeing and again he put it down to being delirious. He then said this thing kind of half danced and swayed left to right, making a weird sound while it did. My friend actually starts to think maybe it was a skinwalker that he was imagining or something so just comes back to the tent and goes back to sleep. Now, I'm telling you this because it was only about halfway through the next day that we both realised what had happened. I was asking my friend where he went off to, and then my friend explains exactly what happened, and I can see the blood draining from his face. What we both described matched absolutely perfectly to each other. We suddenly realised that it wasn't both of us being delirious imagining the exact same thing. My friend looks more horrified than me, and we decide to cancel the rest of the trip immediately. We were so scared that we actually didn't pack up the rest of our things. We ended up day hiking, and partly night hiking, until eventually we make it back, and we're both covered in sweat now. We ended up going into the ranger station and trying to report what we've seen, and they take it quite seriously. One of the older rangers then says, yeah, you bumped into one of the devils out there. You know the Jersey Devil? We've got him. We've got our own one and he lives out there. I then ask him to elaborate and he says that apparently people have been seeing him for years out there, 
but I don't know if I actually believe this or not. I don't know what I saw that day, I just know that it scared me to my core. I actually have goosebumps when I think about it, but I'm not too scared, not like I used to be. I actually think it was kind of a blessing I was able to see something so weird and supernatural almost like this. That's if it is supernatural, but I don't know what else it could have been. I wish I had a more clear state of mind and I wasn't so tired when I saw it because I would have paid more attention, but I just don't know what to make of this all. So my story isn't necessarily paranormal, but something scary that happened to me. Okay, so I'll get to my story now. I want to give you some info about how my family's campsite was set up. Altogether, there's about 14 of us, including my baby niece and our friend's infant granddaughter, with people hopping in and out of camp for work-related reasons. So the campsite was split in four, with my aunt and uncle on the top left my cousin, her husband, and her baby on the right, the friend of the family, which included three people and one baby, and finally the bottom right, where me, my cousin, her boyfriend and mum and sister were situated, so everything went off without a hitch for the most of the week, with everybody hanging out having a good time, but just as we thought everything was going great, a car pulled into the campsite next to mine, and two middle-aged men get out of the car, and we don't think much of it at first. It was later in the week when we got a taste of what we're in for. So the way to our campsite is positioned in a state park, and we had to walk all the way down the street to the bathroom. So this part of the story was told to me by my cousins. So right as we're going to bed, my cousin, her boyfriend, and my auntie were all walking to go to the bathroom to change when they're met with the sound of an agonizing scream, with one of the two men standing at the end of the road punching himself in the face while screaming at the absolute top of his lungs. Needless to say, they decided to turn around and go to different bathrooms. The second experience happened to me when I woke up around 9am to the sound of two men having a decently loud conversation. I'd just woken up, so the details are a bit fuzzy, but I vaguely remembered them saying, the FBI doesn't have anything on us, and talking about the government, and other crazy things. Now it all sounded like crazy talk, and to be honest, it gave me a little bit of chuckle when I first heard it. It was only when I spoke to my aunt, eating breakfast, and hearing my cousin's story that made me start to realise that something was really wrong with these people. Okay, so the third story comes to you from my mum, who I tend to believe a bit more than my cousin, so I'm 100% certain. So, I was helping my mum take down our tent and pack up into our car after dinner, and I went to my aunt's camp to get some water when my mum claimed to hear them say, I'm going to do something horrible to that mother. Now the slurs continue, and now at this point we're both disgusted, and had assumed that these guys are schizophrenic or something. However, this wasn't all. Halfway through the day, one of the guys left the campsite with the car to do something, so me and my mum, thinking both of them were gone, saw an opportunity to go and change and hang our clothes. However, on the way to the bathroom, we once again saw the second man walking towards his campsite. We thought that they were good on the walk back, thinking nobody would be there. Well, right. We then heard him screaming at the top of his lungs again as he walked by the campsite. We noticed something. No car. No other guy. This man was absolutely screaming at nothing, and I have no idea why it shook me to my core. I'm leaving in a few hours now, and all I can think to myself is, God, thank God this is over. Now I'm somebody who's done wildlife photography, so I go hiking every Sunday, and have been for about a year now. With the frequency I go hiking, it might be surprising that I have two experiences. Or maybe I'm not so sure about frequency. Both my experiences take place in the western part of Wisconsin. 
My first experience was at a semi-defunct state, ground in the middle of the summer. I say semi-defunct because there was a newer gravel parking lot by the gravel road and a gated off-road leading deeper to what used to be a paid parking lot and an RV campsite area. It's about a mile away from the gravel parking lot and paved lot and this walk goes fine. The road continues past the paved lot for about a mile and then splits into almost a non-existent trowel. It was after I got past the paved lot that things get strange. I start to get a feeling that was hard to describe. It just felt wrong. Every step I took, I had the thought, you shouldn't have took another step, you should turn around. The feeling kept growing and growing in intensity until I get to the end of the road and I couldn't take it anymore and turned and went back because I had the strong feeling that if I went on on the trail, something bad would happen. The walking back to the gravel lot is just fine and by the time I get to the lot, the feeling's completely gone and I look for the gates ahead of the gravel road. The second one I will stay is probably just a deer but I'll let you decide. The hike is in early fall. I went off the trail down a gully and followed a small creek. All in all, it was a good hike until I rounded a bend and saw a cave. My initial thought was to check it out and that nagging feeling was like, no, somewhere in here is evil. I admittedly think it was maybe a homeless person, but as soon as I turned away, I had the feeling of being watched that so many people describe out there. So I turned back, tracked back, and was about two miles into the hike when I suddenly got a much more stronger urge. Now my eyes are basically darting all over the place, and I was literally almost walking sideways on the trail. Then all of a sudden, a huge crash comes from behind me. I didn't see anything before or after the crash. This is why I think it was maybe a deer, but it felt too intense for that. The feeling actually doesn't leave me until I'm in the car and I've actually drove away. Maybe it was an overreaction by fight or flight, but it was really weird. I think it's strange too, I didn't actually see anything. I was out with a friend, a few miles from Pikes Peak in Colorado. We were hiking on this trail and up ahead, I see a blue window breaker in the middle of the trail. We hadn't seen anybody else walking all day, so... It was weird, it was placed right in the middle of the path. But hey, things happen and people drop things so maybe it fell out of the backpack and nobody notices. Now the windbreaker was just a piece of this entire campsite that we ended up coming across that was absolutely torn to shreds. There was a tent, a hammock, a collar and a backpack and various articles of clothing thrown about as well. The tent had broken poles and was shredded. It looked like it was from the early 2000s with fading kind of style to it. Think of basic four person tent from Walmart. Now the hammock was still hanging empty and the cooler was opened and empty and there were some clothes scattered. We thought to ourselves that this really looked like somebody's just gone off and vanished. Like they've truly disappeared. It's really weird for us to see. Now for some background, I live in the UK and my flat is located next to a large forest. There's a path which used to be a railway track but has now been converted into a cycle slash walk path with links to the city, preserving the heritage of the rail track. Now some of the old train stations still exist with platforms, although the building itself has been converted to an open space to walk around in. The path's fairly lit up, except the train stations. Now story time. Last year, my friends and girlfriend have visited me over the weekend to party and we have fun since we live at least one and a half hours away. Now my roommate, also from the same hometown and friends with the group, suggested that we should have a campfire. Now being a forest, I didn't want to alert neighbouring flats and potentially get told off. The abandoned train station had good coverage from watchful eyes and it was safe enough to do a campfire. 
It's even had a pit from someone else having a campfire before. So we're here at 11 p.m. We pick a time where that we could practically be the only ones using the path. We laid our blankets and start playing our music and tried to light the firewood. It just wouldn't light though, and we're running out of paper. We then heard a voice, although we could not identify where it was coming from. We all went silent thinking a passer heard the music from the station. After a few minutes of silence, we resumed our activities. Now 15 minutes later, the voice is more audible and more aggressive. It started off with a grunt and worse, sounded more like there were multiple grunts followed by who's there. There was a metal sheet in the corner of the station and my friend said he saw it moving. We all made the decision to pack up shop and leave as quickly as possible. One of my friends was visibly upset and wouldn't move. We had to drag her out. I then turned around and I saw some kind of shadow, which I believe is a very tall man, staring at us, moving quickly towards us. I shout to my friend group to leg it and we run until we reach the street lights and the housing estate. We're all quite shaken up and in hindsight it was probably a bad idea in the first place. My bet is that it's a homeless man who was drugged up and disturbed by the fire, but I don't know what would have happened if we stayed any longer. I hope I never have to encounter this person again. I live in Alberta. We have bears, lynx, moose, wolves and cougars. The cougars scare me more than anything else out here. Now, my husband and I were out hiking on an old hunting trail quite far into the park with our dog. The dog was super big, a rockweiler, an Irish wolfhound, and very well trained. We'd been hiking for about two hours and stopped for a rest on a fallen log. We'd been sitting for just a few minutes when the dog suddenly starts to bark. He sits up and then stares intently into the dense brush bordering the path. After a minute, he jumps up and starts growling and hackles. He's now standing between us and the brush. We didn't see a thing though, but we know that there's cougars in the area. Not much else is out there, so it's quiet and hidden out there, so we pack up and start hiking back. The dog is super relieved we're walking and leaving, following us, checking behind us every so often. While we hike back for 10 minutes or so, the dog stops staring behind us, growling loudly again. We have bear spray, but no gun. We figure the cougar is following us, so we keep hiking back, and the bear sprays out. It goes like that for roughly an hour. We hike for a while, dog watching our back and occasionally stopping to growl. Whatever he senses, we actually don't. The dog stays tense for the rest of the way back and keeps looking over our shoulders. But... The last half of the hike, he doesn't growl at anything else. Still scared the life out of me, but I'm so grateful that the dog actually stuck with us instead of running off, which usually ends in people being eaten. Now, a college buddy and I were out about one night in my hometown during the summer break. I was obviously still living at home with my parents and he was down visiting for the weekend. I live in a pretty small town, nothing to do there, so we found ourselves wandering around for a bit and wound up starting a small campfire in a small sandy clearing in the woods near our local softball field. It's a clear night out, not a single cloud in the sky, and the moon was full, so we could very clearly see everything around us. It was just one of those nights that was barely dark because the moon's so bright and we're just chill talking, no big deal. Now suddenly, we heard a scream come out from deeper in the woods. We both instantly be quiet and start listening, trying to figure out what we've just heard. Then we heard it again, but this time it was clearer and definitely sounded like someone screaming, like a little girl screaming in absolute terror. We both kind of just stood there for a moment staring at each other. I was mostly staring at him, hoping to get some answers back to what we heard. My buddy was one of those guys who practically lived out in the woods. He's an avid hunter and fisher and done so his entire life. And 
has since spent a summer camping in another area. I was expecting him to write it off as an owl or hawk or even a fisher cat, something, but the look on his face was probably more terrified than mine, simply because he knew it wasn't any of those, and that made me even more scared. Then we hear it again, louder and closer, seemingly coming from up in the trees or something. We both freaked out. Somehow, we had the pressure, but the perseverance of mind to quickly put out our fire. The abundant sand actually helped in that regard. And the moment the fire was out, we both ran as fast as we could to get out of there. We ran out of the woods and into the softball field area, where it was straight shot out the road. Now we both kind of run, and we're very scared. We can hear the screaming getting louder and louder, it's chasing us. Just as we reach the road, for some reason, we stopped and turned to wait. And then I heard it again closer, definitely coming from the air and not the ground. One more time, this time straight above me. Remember when I said it was a cloudless night with a full moon? Very bright. I could see the sky as clear as day, yet I heard a little girl screaming in terror above my head, but nothing was there. We both turned and ran, and this time we didn't stop until we get to my mum and dad's home. I told this story to numerous people, including a lot of people who are way more woodsy than I am, but nobody's come up with an explanation for this. Part of me is convinced it's an owl, but so far, I've never heard an owl scream like that at all. If I had a recording, I would have just played it, but it would have sounded exactly like a girl screaming in terror. So that's my question, what on earth was this thing? I experienced a number of creepy things in my life, but this was by far the most scary of which ever happened to me. I'd worked as a park ranger for about 20 years before the experience had happened to me, so I kind of didn't expect anything too far out of the ordinary to happen. I'd like to share a few other tales before I get to my main story though, but the main one's definitely the most creepy for me. It still gives me nightmares actually. I remembered one of the most scary experiences that I had, other than the main thing really, was somebody gone missing. Apparently it was a hiker wearing a blue coat, and some other hikers had actually reported seeing him somewhere out there. Apparently he was about 70 or so, who had always gone out there before called Bill. Bill was actually quite popular with the locals too, so there was definitely some worry when nobody was able to see him again. Apparently he was supposed to return to his wife, but he never ended up doing so and that's when we got called out to go and find where he'd gone. I had a bad feeling about this one before I ever started it actually. I was actually quite worried, which again wasn't really a normal thing for me. Usually I felt really truly at home while out there. Being in the sun hitting my face, I didn't think there was much of a better feeling. But on this day, for whatever reason, I had a strange cold feeling going through my veins. I knew something was off. So off I go. I was kind of expecting to find him somewhere laid out, needing some water or something, but for the first while of searching, I couldn't really see anything or anyone. I'd saw some other hikers actually wearing blue things, and I was kind of convinced that I'd actually seen him, but it turned out I didn't. I remembered thinking I'd seen him multiple times, and it just never seemed to come off correctly. I thought it was pretty weird. I mean, I was absolutely certain that I was looking at somebody. I'd focus for a second and they'd be gone. Now this went on for the first hour or two of my hike trying to find him. I got to about the midway point and one of my colleagues was taken over from me. I told him that you have to be careful because I've seen him out here a few times I think, but I can't figure out where. He says okay. I then start walking back and strangely, I keep on seeing him in his blue jacket. I'm pretty sure it's the same one because it matches what the description is, but it seems like every time that I get close he seems to just vanish. I thought this was especially odd. I get back and have my break and I had a power nap actually. 
My dream was quite a weird, vivid one. I do remember this part. I seem to remember it really clearly. It was like I was doing my job in my sleep. But there he was, Bill. He said it's okay and to come with him. I was actually really confused by this and decided just to follow him. He eventually led me to a lake in my dream and I thought, well, that was weird. Because I woke up pretty much straight away after to the alarm that I'd set myself not to oversleep. It's also signified that it's now my time to go and help them out, so I made some effort to do so and I switch over roles and I start heading back doing the search now. At the time I encountered another person, also in a blue jacket. I remember thinking to myself that why are there so many people out here in jackets like this? I must be going crazy or something. He said that he wanted to help me out. This guy actually looks really young compared to Bill. And I was pretty confident we were going to find him. We weren't really supposed to have help off of other people, but something just felt different this time and we set out. We start hiking the trail for a little while, and we get closer and closer to the designated search site. It didn't take too long before we found roughly where we were supposed to go, and this other person said I'm sure that I saw him by the lake. I say okay and ask him to show me, and then we both go down further to try and investigate the area where apparently he is. I remembered on this specific hike and walk that something felt really different. I don't know how to describe it, but I just felt really warm. We eventually get further down and come across the lake. I turn to ask that guy for his name and he's disappeared and that's when I see something floating in the lake. I then realise that I'm looking at a person and they have a blue jacket. I have this horrible feeling and I go to sit down for a second and put my hand on my head. I go to look around for the guy who helped me, but I can't find him. I then realise that what I'm looking at is a body in the lake. It's certain now. I radio in for some help, and I just wait there not knowing what to do. The person's clearly long gone, so there's absolutely no point in me trying to go over to them, so I just sit and wait. Eventually, some others come over and retrieve the body and confirm that it was Bill. I then ask if they've seen another young hiker wearing a blue jacket and they say no, there's nobody here. I think that's really odd. And then they say that nobody else has been in the area or seen around here all day other than me. It still kind of creeps me out. I think somehow he come to help me guide him back to the body or something. I don't know, it's weird. Especially that mixed in with the dream just really doesn't sit too well with me. But anyway, I'd like to get to the main point of my story. So, I was doing one of my patrols one day, and I actually went further than where I was supposed to. My boss really wasn't the best at the time, and I was basically just glad to get away from him. I remembered while I was walking further and further away from him that there was something really odd up ahead. It's what I can only describe as a Sasquatch. Out from a tree emerges a figure, which is roughly 7 feet tall, and I was met with an absolutely horrendous smell. This thing was covered in all black, and at first I was convinced it was a bear, but then I could see it wasn't. It was more humanoid shaped, if that makes sense. This thing looked at me, and I locked eyes with these terrible dark eyes for all of two seconds before it turns and starts coming towards me. No, I'm not joking, it honestly felt like the ground was shaking somehow. It couldn't have been because I was so far away. But I'm frozen in the spot for a second before I realise this thing's picked up a jogging pace. I let out a scream and then start running in the opposite direction. I probably ran for about three minutes, looking over my shoulder every so often and this thing didn't let up. I was pretty sure it was gaining on me, so... I decide to go as downhill as I can to get back as quick as possible. I know the area well, but this thing seems to too because it's straight on my back. I probably got about another 10 feet away from where our base was 
and suddenly I can feel some kind of silence. I turn and look around and I can see that this thing is gone. I explain what's happened to some of the other workers there that weren't actually rangers but wanted to help out, so we go back to investigate. This time we're actually armed. We can see that something very large has come through here, actually knocking down trees somehow on its way. And there's a terrible smell, but we can never locate this thing again. Even working in these trails now, I'm still terrified that I'm going to encounter it again, and maybe it will see me before I see it. I don't want to say it was a Sasquatch, but I don't know what else I can actually explain it as. It really haunts me. Now I've had this story for 6 years, and I haven't really spoke about it. I went camping 6 years ago with an now ex-boyfriend of mine. The campsite we picked was beautiful, and we were able to drive through some rough trails. The spot we picked was next to some hiking trails that weren't very far from some natural hot springs and a huge waterfall. We were in the middle of nowhere, absolutely nobody's around. We set up camp the next day, and we went hiking, soaked up in the hot springs, and come back and had dinner. It's all very normal, until the next day. Now I need to give some context as to how we slept that night, so you can understand my confusion. Before we go to sleep, I put our food cooler and a stereo that we brought into the car and lock it. I put the keys in the front pocket of my backpack, and put the backpack next to my sleeping bag on the far right side of the tent away from the door of the tent. My boyfriend at the time slept nearest to the door of the tent with a gun next to him. We woke up the next morning and I felt fine. I had slept hard and from inside the tent everything seems normal. We get out. Our campsite was in absolute chaos. The fire pit we had made was ruined. The cooler had been thrown over and things are scattered everywhere. Even the stereo was smashed to pieces laying next to a tree. All of the car doors are open including the trunk. We stood there for a minute in silence just taking everything in. The woods fell off now. It was quiet. And not really the beautiful place that we saw yesterday. Everything feels wrong now. My ex accuses me of not locking the door the night before and that an animal got our stuff, but I promise that I locked it. I then go back into the tent to get the keys from my backpack, but they aren't there. I then found them later on the ground next to the car. We quickly throw everything into the trunk and left. My boyfriend was quiet and wouldn't talk to me about what had happened. He finally spoke up when we were almost home and told me that that night he had a dream that somebody was kneeling over him holding a gun just staring at him. When I tried to question him more, he said he didn't want to talk about it, and that I shouldn't speak about it anymore. I've tried to forget about it, but I just can't. Something wrong happened to us those nights in the woods then, and I just cannot explain it. I'm a park ranger, and even when I'm off duty, I absolutely love to go camping. Now this is something that had never changed, and has been something I've really done for a long time. I used to go with one of my best friends, but we kind of become distant after he moved for college and I did, so often I'd end up going tenting alone and camping. Now, there was one particular trip that I went on that seemed perfectly normal. Now, I had to drive a good three or four hours to actually get to here, so it is a relatively long trip, I guess. At the time, my car didn't have a working radio, so it was relatively annoying. I mean, I could get it to work sometimes, but I'd literally have to hit the side until it come to life. Now, I didn't set off too late. I actually set off relatively early in the morning, and the drive up there was beautiful. I'd love to say I had music playing, but like I said, I didn't have any of that, so I just had the windows down, using the air to help keep me wake up. It's a technique I've deployed before when I felt extra tired. I drank all my coffee too, so I didn't have much else I could do. Now, when I start doing this, I realise that an absolutely massive bug has come into my truck and I actually almost crashed into some trees just because it made me jump. 
This thing come a couple of inches from my face and I promise you it was the last thing I expected. Luckily I managed to swipe it out of the window and end up doing up all the windows again. Now, on my drive the sun's just starting to rise and it's really beautiful. It's actually a little bit blinding really and I have to put on my sunglasses and put down the thing on top that kind of covers the light. I don't know what it's called but you know what I mean where you can sort of store papers and stuff. I was actually quite hesitant to get this thing down on my truck because I was 100% convinced that a massive creature was going to come out like had come in the window earlier, but luckily nothing was there. So I continue on my drive, and I do realise that there's another truck behind me, not too far off. I haven't noticed it before, but something about it just seems a little weird. Originally I think it's actually one of my friends who has a similar one, but I realise this is different. Also, all of the windows are really tinted out. In fact, I don't think it was legal how tinted these windows were, but hey, I'm not an officer, I'm just going here to enjoy my trip. Now my new friend of mine followed me for a good hour, and I do think it's pretty odd. I would every so often see another car or truck going past, but not that often and especially none that were following me. I decided that I was going to park off at the side of the road to use the toilet. Now I'm a little bit embarrassed to admit that, but I was relatively desperate and the coffee had kind of got to me and I drank a lot before, so I pull over quickly. I'm so desperate that I forget about the truck behind me and I run off into the woods. It's funny because I probably look like a madman, but hey, I was desperate. I'd gone quite far because I really didn't want anyone to see me, and I knew if anyone recognised me as being a ranger I'd probably get in a lot of trouble for it. It's extremely unlikely, but it's just something that ran through my mind. So I run off and alleviate myself. Just as I finish, there's a massive spider just next to my foot. I jump back and kind of kick some leaves in its direction and it scurries off. Thank god that thing didn't go up me when I was using the toilet, I think to myself and kind of laugh. I then hurry back to my truck because I'm getting a little bit cold, because the trees are actually blocking out some of the sunlight. I quickly adjust my rear view mirror to make sure I can see good when I'm driving, and I notice the truck has stopped again. It's stopped just out of sight, but this is weird because it's been with me for at least an hour. Maybe they assumed it was a rest stop? I don't know, pretty unrealistic. I decide I should start driving forward and just keep an eye on it. I'm glad to say that it eventually goes out of sight and I continue on and I quickly forget about the truck. Now there's a good chance that maybe they just decided that they were going to stop in the same place as me and presume that was what you're allowed to do here, but I'm not so sure to be honest. Something about it just seemed pretty off and odd. But anyway, I was happy that there was no weird bugs or insects around me at this point and I continue on my way. And that's the most important thing for me now. I continue driving and I still have a couple of hours left now. It's not too much further, but I was starting to get a bit bored, not having the radio on. I think maybe that was making me a little bit overcautious and overthinking everything. Because, you know, when there's nothing there to distract you, I guess your mind can kind of run wild and get away from you. I continue and I eventually make it to the area that I love to go camping. Luckily enough for me, when I pull up, I don't see another car in sight, which is absolutely gorgeous for me. I'm someone who likes being around people, but I suppose where I have to do it relatively often for my job, I appreciate having uninterrupted time within nature. Now, the area where I park my car is far away from a big flooded area. Well, it's not really flooded, it's from rainfall, but I do not want to fall in this because I know if I get wet out here, I'm going to have a nightmare trying to dry off my clothes and I don't really have enough to not be in trouble if that happens. Quickly grab everything from out my truck and I make my way through the gate. I then continue and make my way over to the main path. There's some areas that I've camped in before around here, but I want to get away from people, so I decide to continue on. I had some really nice boots with me that I'd bought, 
They weren't ones I used while I was on the job, they're just ones that I found really comfortable. They're very lightweight too. I'm actually trying my best not to get them dirty, which is something I'm quite embarrassed to admit, because I know if some of my ranger friends had heard me admit that, they would probably give me endless grief for it, but I really like my shoes and wanted to keep them tidy. I have some camouflage pattern on too, which is something I always liked to wear when I went out into the woods. It sounds stupid, but I like the idea of being able to hide from animals and things if I really need it, but of course you're always going to get ones that can just smell you, but hey, it made me feel a little bit better. Now no, I didn't have a camouflage match in tent too, which would be really funny if I did, but I kind of wish I did, but I'll get to that later. Now I eventually make it to my camping spot, and I quickly get a fire going. I decide that I'm going to cook some food, and I want to collect as much firewood as I can so I don't have to do it in the following morning. Now everything's normal, and I actually really enjoyed the first night. I remembered laying back on my sleeping bag, which I had just poking out of the tent. I was staring up at the stars, and for the first time in my life I saw a shooting star, which I thought was really cool. I jokingly made a wish to myself that I'd make it out of there in one piece, which I actually thought was really funny at the time. With my head rested on the side, I can hear some kind of rustling off in the trees around me. Now, I'm a little bit worried that it's some kind of animal, but I stop for a moment just to try and figure out what this is. The fire's gone out at that point, so I'm pretty sure they can't see me, unless it's just some of the burning embers that are going strong still from my fire. Now, I'm almost certain I can make out the sound of somebody calling out for help. What's really weird is it sounds like my brother. I know that's impossible though because he's about five states over, and I'm certain he's not here with me. I think maybe it's some form of delirium and my mind playing tricks on me, and I decide that I should probably get some sleep, and I needed the rest. I guess I'm kind of freaked out from what happened earlier still and haven't realised it, and maybe my mind's just playing tricks on me. I really need the sleep. I get into the tent and I try and convince myself that this is an owl. But every so often I just faintly hear it, almost like it's perfectly in place for me to hear my brother calling out for help just as I'm about to sleep. Yeah, that's it. It must be my mind, I tell myself. You're half fading in and out of consciousness, just get some rest. I eventually manage to sleep. I wake up the next day and I feel absolutely terrible. I have a really bad headache and I really struggle to get out of bed. I start to question whether it was something I've eaten or drinking, but everything seems to be fine. I actually go and smell my food to make sure that it's not gone off, but everything's fine. I think this is quite bizarre and I think, oh, maybe I'm a bit unwell and I should probably head back soon. I decide the best thing to do now is not to pay too much attention to it, and just to head on. I think if I'm really unwell, I can always head back sooner, and I'm happy to do so. I then start on my journey once again. Now, for this part of my trip, I'm going to do some fishing, which is something I love, so I'm quite excited for this. I have all my bait and everything with me and a fishing rod, so I head off. I make it over to the area that I like to do fishing in, and I cast my reel. I fumbly knocked over my bait, and I'm quite annoyed because all of the little maggots and things are now swimming in the water, and I'm not going to be able to get them back easily. I could say, ha, oh, I guess it's no fishing now. I ended up waiting for a good few hours, but unfortunately, there was no fish for me to catch that day. I jokingly say, ha, oh, well, you're going to enjoy this food I've left there for your fish. I then turn to leave and start gathering up my stuff, and I can hear somebody scream, no, you're not, just off in the distance, just out of earshot. I pause for a moment. I'm convinced the fish aren't talking to me, but I'm not certain now. Maybe I'm really unwell and I'm starting to hallucinate and imagine things that aren't actually there. I then laugh and say, ha, huh, say it again. I didn't realise anyone else was here, and I met with complete silence. 
Now I think this is extremely odd because I clear as day heard somebody respond to what I just said, but the thing that really gets to me is the distance. I didn't say my part very loud, but they said theirs very far away, so how could they have possibly heard me? It doesn't make sense. I go to turn around, and I can faintly see the embers from a fire just off in the distance, with another not too far off to the side of me. I realise maybe I've intruded upon someone else's sight and decide to leave quickly. I don't want to mess with whoever's here, and they seem a little bit weird I decide, and I head back to the camp. Now it was relatively dark when I started to head back and I have a horrible feeling that something bad's about to happen, but being a ranger, I convince myself it's nothing and just to calm down and stop being silly. When I'm making my way back however, there's something I've realised that's just odd. I can still see the faint glow of embers near the water, but I don't smell any fire, and I definitely don't see any smoke. And surely if somebody was there recently I would have realised that there would have been some sign. I was too scared honestly to investigate further at the time, but I know that I have to make it back to my campsite now to be within relative safety. I'm annoyed at myself for knocking over all the bait and the water too and decide just to get home, make some nice food and call it a night in my tent. I go over there to do that, and I just put all my things down and everything seems to be back to normal as it was, but it isn't exactly. Some of my things have definitely been moved, and I'm actually seriously questioning whether I'm very unwell and haven't realised it. I mean waking up and feeling terrible, knocking over the bait so clumsily, and not realising where my things are when I've returned. I put all of this down to food poisoning, or something I've drank that I definitely shouldn't have, and that I need to cut the trip early. I say yeah, just make the trip early, and I decide just to tuck into some of my favourite food earlier than I was supposed to, because I know I'm going to be going back the next morning. Now I make it back into my tent and I stayed up for what must have been 2 or 3 hours trying to listen to make sure that there was nobody around me at the time. I can't hear anyone. And that's when I remembered it again. Why did I hear my brother calling out my name? I must be really unwell now. And I slowly slowly start drifting in and out of consciousness but somehow I'm just about able to keep myself awake when I hear it screams for help once again, this time closer. Now, it's not in my brother's voice this time, I don't actually recognise the voice, but it sounds very real. I wait for a few moments to try and listen, and I'm met with silence again. I really think that my mind's going now, but I know this was real. I decide to slowly unzip my tent, grabbing my knife. I took my head out of the tent cautiously, and I met once again with nothing. I'm now extremely annoyed, because there's either someone in danger that I'm not helping, or I'm imagining all of it, and I decide that I have to investigate. I quickly put on my warmer clothes and head out. What's worse is, I don't really have much charge on my flashlight, I have to use it very sparingly, and only in flashes. But the problem is, my eyes aren't really adjusting to the darkness, and I can't rely on my light source, so I have to keep this in mind. I decide I'm going to use a technique that we've been taught in Ranger School. I'm going to circle around the perimeter of my tent and make my way back again. I do have quite a good idea of my bearings, and I guess it's from being a ranger that really helped me out with that. So I head out in one direction and make my start. Now, initially, Everything seems normal. I make it about a hundred yards away from where my tent is, and I turn back and realise that I may have not put out the fire as well as I thought I had. I realise that I can still see a red glow coming from just off to the side of my tent. Just as I turn back to make sure I put it out correctly, it goes off suddenly. I think this is really bizarre, but I don't think much of it and continue my search. There's either somebody out here on drugs, or somebody who's really needing help and is in danger and might be injured. Maybe they've been out here for weeks, who knows, and I might be their only way to safety. I decide that I have to figure out what this is, and 
I continue the search. The thing is, I don't find anything until suddenly, help, right next to me. I'm convinced it's a person now because it's at head height, and I turn around and I can see it's something just behind the tree. I think this is pretty weird because why can't I see this person? The tree is very small but I can hear this. I can hear help once again. I then get closer to the tree and I realise that there's a speaker tape to the side of it. I think this is really weird. In my frustration of something scaring me so much I ended up punching it and breaking it. I didn't hear the cry for help again. I think this is really odd, thinking maybe some stupid hunters put it out here, thinking it's going to attract some kind of weird god knows what, and I shouldn't have stumbled upon it. I decide that I should really get back and maybe get some sleep now. Now I'm absolutely exhausted by this point, and I know hiking back's an option, but it's going to be virtually impossible because how far I have to go. I decide the best thing I can do at this point is pick up all of my belongings and set up camp somewhere else. So I go back to my tent. I'm very cautious to make sure no one else is around me and I gather my things. It takes me a good 20 minutes to put everything away and the whole time I have my knife in my pocket where I can very easily grab it and get anyone if I need to. Now I try and act very confident portraying the fact that I'm not scared, but really I feel terrified. The weirdest thing is I'm not convinced whether this is anybody actually out here or not at this point. I'm pretty certain it's my mind playing tricks on me because of something I've eaten or drank, so I'm not too worried if that makes sense. I get all of my things together and I head off. I only go for about 20 minutes or so because I'm not really sure what direction I'm heading in. Once finding a really good spot, I set my tent up and set a whim for the night, and I must have passed out. I wake up in a dream where everything's a very warm colour and it seems to be daylight. It's almost like just as the sun started to come up and everything's very beautiful and you feel very warm. I realise it must be daylight now and I force myself to wake up. I go to touch part of my tent and it's extremely warm. I think this is odd, but luckily I can get out another way and I quickly do that. And I'm blinded. Literally, it's like staring at the sun for a second and I turn around. And suddenly I smell smoke. Now my brain suddenly kicks to life. Something's off here. I quickly worm my way out of the tent and I've realised now that it's not daylight. It's nightfall, it's still the same night, and my tent is on fire, and some of my belongings around me. I look, and everything I own virtually is on fire, and my tent is starting to collapse. I think this is a dream, and I wipe my eyes frantically, but it isn't. I reach down for my knife quickly. I scream out, hey, who is this, and what are you doing to me? Still not entirely sure if it was an accident or not. But then I realise there's no fire here. I left my original campsite. I realise now that something has set fire to my tent while I was sleeping, sleeping, and if I hadn't have woke up when I did, I wouldn't be here now. I would be literally starting to set on fire slowly trapped in my tent. I want to say I was brave, and I wait to find whoever this sick person or whatever this thing was to get them with the knife, but I wasn't. I ran. I ran for my life. I turn around quickly and continue in the direction that I would have went if I continued hiking for a good spot. I didn't care where I was going, I just had to get out of here. I can't hear anything else behind me luckily. Just the sounds of the fire behind me. The thing that's worse is the fire is actually spreading now and I'm quite worried there's going to be a big forest fire. There's enough dry leaves to set up half of this place, but that's a later issue. I continue going, constantly glancing back, and realising that I must have covered some distance because the fire is getting more and more distant from my view. Eventually I've slowed down a bit and just start climbing up a hill. 
I take one last look back at the campsite, the last I'll ever see of my tent, and I can just about make out a figure next to the fire, standing there, certainly staring in my direction. That was more than enough for me to know that this wasn't just in my mind, this was all very real and it wasn't an accident that I caused. I turn round and I hike for another good 40 minutes in the cold night air, with the moonlight as my only guidance. Being a ranger I have a very good idea of where I'm going luckily, and I manage to make it back to an area that I know quite well. I loop round back onto the small path that's going to lead me back to my car. This is when I break out into a sprint again when I can see my truck. I quickly get in, and almost on autopilot get it into reverse. Now my adrenaline must have been going really strong because I actually can't remember turning the keys to the ignition, just the engine come into life. Again I don't remember driving down the road, but I drive for another 45 minutes until I make it to a local town. I immediately pull over into a bar because it's one of the only places that is still open now. I walk in and demand to use a phone. I don't even explain what's happened. They must have been able to see that something was wrong because they handed me the phone without asking anything. I quickly called the fire department and alert them that there might be a forest fire. And then I called the police and explained what's happened. And I also called into the ranger station that I worked at just to explain that I wouldn't be coming into the work for the next few days because something that happened. Now at first they thought I was drunk because there's a the music in the background but something about my tone told them otherwise. I was eventually able to meet up with the police a few minutes later and explain exactly what happened. They told me that they were going to send out a squad to investigate. A few moments later I heard a fire truck scream in pass too. Someone offered me a beer but I declined because I wanted to make sure I was 100% sure of what had happened as I made the police report. I went over to the truck and explained everything that happened and said, can I please just sleep now, I don't want to investigate this, I don't want to know anything else and they gave me their number so I can call back the following day. Nicely they even offered to drive me over to a local motel where they paid for me to spend the night which I greatly appreciated. I made it into bed and completely passed out and woke up 12 hours later. This time I wasn't in danger and the light I could see around me was real and I felt completely safe this time and thank god for that. I call back the number again and the police informed me that they're still doing a continuing investigation and they can only tell me what they found from that first night. They said they had a good search and thankfully there was no big fire. It had already gone out by the time they got there, but there was still a good 50 or so square meters of scorched earth. They looked as hard as they possibly could for any signs of life or people out there that could have caused this, but all they found was a burnt out tape recorder just next to a tree that was burnt down. I then explained that I had actually heard voices on the tape recorder and they said thank you for the information as, but of course this was completely burnt now and virtually useless for their case. I'm still waiting for updates but I'll let your imagination figure out what happened. I'm convinced, absolutely convinced that somebody was hunting me and was looking for a murder victim that day and they'd been stalking me from the truck, probably looking for someone they thought was innocent and an easy target to get out in the woods, but they probably didn't realise they were messing with a ranger, someone who knew that wilderness very well, and was able to use techniques to stay completely calm even though everything around them was going wrong. Now I've been sitting on this story for many years now, and it might not be as creepy as some of them on here, but it's really creepy to me. Now my aunt owned a large piece of land, literally over a hundred acres, in northwest Connecticut for many years now. Her property is located in a state park that is mostly uninhabited and only frequented by backpackers. Her land is well, well off any main roads, and you have to drive through quite a lot of forest to reach her home. She brought the land and remodelled the old house that was already built on it, so 
It was more livable, and going up to visit her has always been my favourite thing to do. I've been going very early since I was actually a baby and spent countless hours exploring the woods, creeks and land around the house. We'll call it the farm, although it's not really a true one as there's not any agriculture or livestock there. My auntie does have some rescued miniature horses, alpacas, donkeys and other animals like ducks. Well back in the day really. Now the animals are on par with some of the best protected in the area and they're very happy and have a great life there. They're actually quite chubby, really. Now, the rest of the farm is untouched woodlands. In the early 2000s, she decided to install a 12 feet fencing around the property, although it only encloses about 80 acres of land she owns. She explained to me that she couldn't stand the sound of the coyotes howling right outside her window at night, and that she had some creepy encounters while living out here. She did not go into details of these since I was a young child. She lives alone though, so I understand why she wanted a sense of security living so deep in the woods. We are originally from the Bayous of Louisiana, so being in this type of environment was new to all of us. Anyway, despite being initially unfamiliar with the land, I eventually learned to navigate the area very well as a child. I had a few favourite spots and one was up a small foothill in the deepest part of the woods. I would go up every so often that eventually a small path was established in the brush and I would bring my cousins with me to show them my little oasis. Now this is in 2008 when I was about 10 years old. I took a summer trip to my aunt's and brought my best friend Alex with me. She and I often took trips here together during our childhood and this was not her first time accompanying me to the farm. I remembered that we were in the woods at my favourite spot sitting together listening to Katy Perry playing Doodle Jump on a new iPad touches. This makes me laugh but we were just trying to enjoy some nature while getting a feel of our new tech I guess. We were there for a while enjoying ourselves and talking about random kid stuff when there was a shift in the air almost like a suffocating stillness and silence settling upon the woods. I paused the music and looked to Alex, who was already staring at me with a concerned expression on her face. We stayed still and silent for a minute, tilting our heads to listen to the woods and search out any unfamiliar sounds that normally would bellow out throughout the farm and night, but there were no birds, no summer bugs, and the trees almost seemed to be frozen in place. As if it was like winds that would usually rustle amongst us was completely vacant. It was a horrible vulnerable feeling that Alex could feel too. Then began the sound of footsteps coming from even deeper in the woods. It took a moment for me to determine what the sound is, but the distinct rhythm of weight being picked up and down on the leaves is impossible not to realise. It was very heavy sounding and was coming up towards us from a steep slope down the side of the mountain and foothill. I remembered thinking it was impossible for a human to move so easily through that part of the woods since it was very thick, with fallen branches and trees, even making it hard for an agile slim child to navigate. I mean, let alone an adult. It felt as though the woods laid still, and we're waiting for the footsteps to come even closer. Do you hear that, Alex? I whispered and she nods. It sounds like footsteps. I continue and she nods again. Looking like she was about to burst into tears, I took her hand and began running down the makeshift path with her trying not to fall apart or let her lag behind me. We did not stop until we reached the house. I don't think we told anyone that day because we were just too shaken up to even comprehend what might have been out there. The next day, I said to Alex if she would go back to the spot with me. She was very hesitant but eventually agreed and said we could go back to look for other signs of humans. We made our way back, nervous but determined to discover what had invaded our little sanctuary. We reached the spot. I looked down towards the direction that we heard the footsteps. 
I think that I even slid down a bit to investigate the plausible indentations in the brush and leaves. Now initially I can't really see anything there. I didn't go too far because I was about to lose my nerve and I hadn't noticed much anyway. So I decided to climb back up to where Alex is waiting for me very nervously. We decided that it must have been some kind of animal or deer, despite every logical explanation indicating otherwise. I knew what deer sounded like and that wasn't a deer, but I wanted to forget and just have fun again. We took out our iPods and began the same ritual of relaxing and playing games while chatting about nonsense. It seemed like everything went back to normal really or relatively. So we quickly forgot about the terrifying experience and let our native childlike wonder take over. After a little while, the stillness returned. It happened so quickly that we almost forgot about what happened before. However, this time, the footsteps started almost instantly, seeming like it was a moment we forgot about them before. Now, this was really weird because Maybe if it was an isolated event, we couldn't have questioned it too much, but now, we're absolutely certain that this was real. Now, the best way I can explain the sound and the location is similar to a spot that we went to the day before, but somewhat more to the right of where the forest was, and it's very dark, and the incline to reach us is less steep. I didn't wait too long to run, but... It was long enough to realise that the sound was fast and closer, definitely not a deer or bear. I did not look into the woods too closely because I wanted to get the hell out of there and I was scared to see whatever it was. I knew it was close enough that it would be upon us at any moment if we didn't flee. So without a word, Alex and I took off and ran as fast as humanly possible out of the woods. It is not a super exciting experience, but really bizarre. I've actually since moved out, but I've never been able to forget this experience. I seriously don't have a clue what this possibly could have been. I doubt it was a person, so I'm really not sure what this was. A few years ago, my friend Tez and I set out on the Great American Road Trip. We were going to drive from New York to LA, zigzagging through the country for six weeks. Now we're both in our early 20s and pretty broke and my mum had a long haul truck and suggested that I saved a ton of money and we could actually sleep in the back of the hatchback. It was pretty cosy as a setup. We brought some blankets and sheets at Goodwill and cut one of them up to make curtains. Now by the end of the week we got in so ready that we can really set up a camp in about 10 minutes. I mean, luggage moved out to the front, curtains up, bedding down and ready for the night. Now we slept in parking lots, free campsites, rest areas, basically anywhere it seemed safe and semi-legal. There was never a night after the first night where we felt scared until the last week of the trip in Arizona. We were near Flagstaff and we had gotten pretty used to our routine. We didn't go on a set schedule and would never drive more than a few hours. No destination really in mind, outside a few must-see landmarks. We'd drive to places we found the night before on Google and take suggestions from other campers, locals and people we'd met. We'd also gotten very good at making friends. We went to Denny's with a group of rednecks we met at a campsite in the back of their pickup because I got hungry and overheard them saying that they were going to go. We met an 80 year old cowboy who took us out drinking and taught us how to line dance at a country bar. Now, we played the guitar with some musicians in the middle of a thunderstorm, got fed up really and decided that we're going to go hang out with some other people we met. We spent the 4th of July with a family who basically adopted us into their campsite. Basically, Every encounter we had with a stranger was really a positive one. This night didn't appear to be any different. We found a free campsite on Google and drove into the woods, following our GPS. We were pretty far out of town and something seemed a little off when we pulled up to the campsite. 
There was one RV parked and two cars further up in the trees. We pulled up near the RV and a man opened the door who said hello and he just stared. Now his expression was completely blank. Then, as if she hadn't said anything, he just slowly closed the window again and stared at us the entire time. Figuring out that he wants some privacy and maybe we're being obnoxious, we pulled further down the road and found a flat spot to park the car. Instead of our usual routine of setting up camp immediately while it was still light out, we goofed around for a while and just had fun. Now my friend pointed out a campfire further down the campsite and we decided to go and be friendly. We'd met so many cool people from the previous few weeks that we actually wanted to go and chat and wander over. Now near the campfire were two men, the owners of the car we'd seen earlier. They seemed friendly and sat down to chat. They were drinking and smoking and we sat down and had a beer with them. One of the men seemed really off and we came out feeling that something was completely off and that maybe two of the men didn't actually know each other and the older man was definitely on some kind of drugs. He was spinning in circles and talking about UFOs, however he seemed harmless. This left us chatting with the younger man, who kept claiming to be a former park ranger. He was handsome and easygoing and spent several hours just chatting about our trip, everything, and then started talking about the bear. He'd seen a bear earlier in the forest. Now we don't really believe him and he pulls out his camera to show photos of it. It was very close to the campsite and we're both a bit freaked out. It wasn't unheard of for one of us to get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night so the idea of a bear being there scared us. Now as we said that the ranger laughed and his expression changes. It's hard to describe but his voice seems somehow cold. He said, if you get out of your car in the middle of the night it's not the bears you need to be scared of. I kept waiting for the laugh but it never come. I laughed awkwardly and made a dumb joke about serial killers in the woods and my friend laughed as well and joked about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We moved on to another subject but within 5 minutes the ranger who come back to it and was talking about something grabbing us out from the middle of the night in the car. No matter how we steered the conversation away from serial killers he kept latching on. The older man was high as a kite at this point and was staring at the stars and not talking. We'd just awkwardly laugh or sip our beer and tried to get the conversation elsewhere. Then the ranger stood up and walked towards the caller to get another beer. At this point it's pitch black out. I can't see anything outside of the circle of light from the campfire. The beer caller was outside of that circle. Suddenly, there's a red dot in the darkness and it took a moment for me to realise it's a camera. The ranger's holding a camera. He's taken a photo of us. I could see the screen on the digital camera light up. Now it wasn't odd for people that we've met to take pictures with us. My friend is gorgeous with dark hair, blue eyes, like a young Megan Fox and we're friendly. People like having pictures of themselves too, but it was an entirely strange thing to have this person taking photos of us without asking or even any indication of what was about to happen. We were both staring at him like deer in headlights at this point, but instead of realising what he's doing is weird, he suddenly checks his camera, adjusts some things and takes another, with no flash, no asking us to smile or anything, and no explanation. At this point, he comes back and sits down with us, not saying a word about the photo. At this point, me and my friend are very freaked out. We make some rubbish excuses that we need to set up our campsite and nope the hell out of there. When we both start to leave, the UFO guy smiles and says have a good night. Ranger however looks at us with a smile that doesn't reach his eyes and says be careful out there, there's more than bears in the woods. Now at this point every hair on my body stood on end. I wasn't alone in my discomfort either because my friend laughed a response and pulled away with me quickly towards the car. We rushed back to the car which we only found in the dark by referencing the RV and jump in the front seat so my friend is 
almost hyperventilating. Why did he take a picture of us? I read that serial killers sometimes warn their victims. She stared at me for a second and locked the car doors. Do you think he just took pictures of us? Now we're both really freaked out and she's in complete panic and quickly turns on the headlights. I immediately yell at her to turn them off because he's gonna know exactly where our car is. God knows why but this is the only night that we'd not set off our camp. We didn't need to tear anything down so we just get in the car and floor it out of there and as we get onto the dirt road the ranger was walking towards our car with that same expression. I hope I never see him again. I had a really weird experience in the Conagree National Park outside of Columbia last winter that brought me to this sub. Now I live in Columbia SC and frequented CMP so I'm familiar with the area. I often jump the fence and walk the boardwalk at night. It's very peaceful to walk the swamp and hear all the wildlife. Now they never have a ranger or guard here after hours so I always go alone. The last time I did this was in October 21. I was taking my usual stroll with the flashlight in hand. I should mention again that between the insects and frogs, the sound is loud, but then it completely stopped when I was about a mile in. I heard what I thought was my wife call me from the trail ahead, but she wasn't there. I was alone and she was out of town. I then heard water slosh into my right and saw nothing with my flashlight. I chalked it up as being tired and kept it moving. The wildlife started up shortly thereafter and everything was fine. Maybe 15 minutes later, I noticed that it got eerily quiet again and I heard the swamp water slosh into my left. This time however it was more deliberate, like somebody walking almost. I was in a thick proportion and I couldn't see more than 20 feet in front of me, and then I heard my wife's voice again. Again, she wasn't with me and was out of town. Certainly moving through a swamp at 1am was not an option for her. I saw what looked to be a human silhouette for a split second, but it was aft, very pale and skinny, and taller than me at 6 feet. I noped out of there and ran almost the entire 2 miles back to the truck and didn't slow down again until I could hear wildlife once more. Like I said, this boardwalk is just in the swamps. Nobody's walking around the water at night without a light or even, I don't know, any kind of animal that big shouldn't really be there. I feel that I should add that I wasn't necessarily in sleep deprived mode and I wasn't high or anything. I just liked the woods at night. I was so freaked by this that I had to share my story. I'm really convinced that what I encountered that day was actually a skinwalker or wendigo or something that can actually mimic voices. There's no way some meth head was stumbling through the forest and swamps miles from civilization and sounds exactly like my wife. My girlfriend at the time and I went camping, five hours away from her birthday slash our anniversary. We made the trip the day after a big storm passed through. We left town early and got there in the early afternoon. The guy at the entrance of the campgrounds mentioned there was no one else there and we're like oh this is going to be sick. First we drove down these long pathways to get to our designated spot. As you got closer to it, the long road narrowed so basically, you had to back out to get out. We unloaded the car, got the tent set up and decided to go walk around the woods. It was dead silent but it was still bright out so we all took in the nature and walk a few miles away. We reached this point in the woods where there were some weird looking white cabins, they're very uniform, all built exactly the same way like, I guess they were a part of the camping grounds but they seemed way out of the way and there was no signs of life there. I felt eerie really to look at it like we shouldn't be there. So we turned around and walked back. We took a breath and just relaxed for a while and stare at the fire pit. Unfortunately neither of us have been camping before so we don't know how to start a fire. 
but luckily we have some of those self-lighting logs from Walmart. I didn't know they existed, that's really cool. And some lighter fluid, but everything else around us was soaked to the bone from the rain that had passed the day before. We knew we needed some kind of kindling, but any dry sticks were few and far between and nowhere to be found. Eventually, we got a small fire going and ate hot dogs and marshmallows and spent some time stargazing. Then we noticed how dark it was. My girlfriend was easily spooked and was like, can we get into the tent now? So we put out the fire and crawl into the tent. We're talking to each other but I could tell she was tense. And suddenly she goes, shh, do you hear that? Before I could respond, I hear what appears to be footsteps like heavy ones and a group of people walk in. I whisper to her, it's probably animals, but she says, no, it can't be animals. What animal sounds like that? We then sat and stared at each other in the dark for what felt like an eternity and we hear mumbling that gets loud along with the footsteps. Now it continues until it's right outside of our tent. We both froze. I don't think either of us were breathing. And then, silence. We waited and waited and I'm still not sure how much time actually passed and eventually my girlfriend said, we have to get to your car. The adrenaline was pumping now so I peeled out of the tent into the darkness and told her to stay behind. We then literally ran into the car. I locked the doors and she was like, what was that? We can't stay here. They said no one was out here but us. What was that? I kept looking around for signs of life, but there was seemingly none. I looked at her and said, okay, I'm going to grab our stuff. You stay here. Now we only have our ice chest and our tent out. I hopped out, ran, grabbed everything, tossing it into the back seat. I'm just about to go for the tent and I hear footsteps closing in. In absolute terror, I yanked the tent out of the ground, wrapped the tarp around it and slang it over my shoulder like some panicked Santa Claus and shoved it into the trunk. I didn't say anything when I got into the car and said, do we have everything in here? And my girlfriend said, yeah, and floored it in reverse. Then we came to a fork in the road that went in like six different directions. I asked my girlfriend if she remembered what path we come down to get here and she told me she didn't know. We chose a random one and ended up in a different camping spot. I cursed under my breath and slammed it into reverse again. Then I noticed from the angle that we exited that I could see the main path back to the gate, thanks to a small tie-in behind an overgrown bush. As we hightailed it out of there, I noticed there was a single small green light out in the woods near where our tent was. We drove the entire five hours back to our hometown and fell asleep on my girlfriend's parents' couch at 4am. We never spoke about the trip again, and I haven't desired to camp since, as you could imagine. Last summer, a good friend and I embarked on a backpacking trip through the White Mountain National Forest in New Hampshire. As fairly experienced day hikers, we felt comfortable in the whites with our inaugural overnight trip. While planning, my buddy Ellis figured we could hike to a backcountry campsite to make our first wilderness night a little more fun. I wasn't going to disagree. Beautiful views, historic trails, and protected night in the dry river wilderness. I was stoked, to say the least. Before any hiking trip I do, a little internet search on the trails or shelters I'll be coming across. Throughout the mid-1900s, there were a series of these lean-to ups and down the dry river wilderness meant for backpackers or through hikers really looking to escape the crowds in more populated areas of the forest. Though as time went on, the Forest Service had other more pressing matters. Many of these shelters were dismantled, except Dry River Shelter 3, the last remaining shelter in the wilderness. On the morning of our hike, I met Ellis at the trowel at the head and we set off. The sky was overcast, bringing with it a dense fog through the trees. 
The weather left us with nearly no visibility, so there went our sun and views. At least the trail consisted of prime, technical New England rock, scrambling alongside the river. Ellis and I made it up the presidential bridge, stopping by the lakes of clouds. The hut was filled with day hikers, backpackers, and through hikers all socialising together. We were even more rewarded with some sun, and a brief glimpse of the dry river valley on the summit of Mount Monroe, before the fog rolled back in. With dwindling views and a stiff wind, Ellis and I hustled below tree line, down to the river shelter free, our home for the night. Once we dropped off the ridge into the valley, we entered the wilderness zone where the rangers patrolled sparing me. Time to really be alone in the wild. As we trek into the wilderness, all signs of civilization disappeared and the trail was densely overgrown. Although it had been raining all week, there were no footprints in the mud either. At least we'd have some relaxing isolation, I guess. After about an hour or so of descending, Ellis spotted the lean-to just as our legs were asking for relief. I look up and there's this gorgeous old timber structure with a well-used fire pit alongside a cold mountain river, pristine camping. As we settled in and explored the site, I found a small bound notebook nestled into the corner of the structure. On the cover someone wrote, Dry River Shelter Number 3. Out of curiosity, I open it, but found nothing more than a lone man's name scribbled onto the first page and a date. Just your standard log camping log. Oddly though, the man signed the book the previous day. We saw no footprints or signs of human life or animal disturbances on the trail here at the shelter. Rain can wash away tracks, but not all signs of animal life. Something fell off to me. I showed it to Ellis, who found it curious but nothing more than the sign of a single man. He convinced me that he's probably a hiking veteran and a professional at LNT. I bought into Ellis's thoughts on the situation and my mind eases now. As the sun set, we started a roaring fire alongside the riverbank. Ellis commented on how quiet the location was having not seen another soul beyond the chirp of birds since leaving Crawford Path. The silence is eerie, but we figure that it's just civilization that's desensitized us to the wild that we're actually in now. The sun was setting, and we grew tired with darkness. Ellis took the lean-to, and I spent the night in my tent. Sleep came quickly after hiking 8 miles with 20 pounds on my back but it doesn't last long. A brutally sharp snapping noise awoken me. The only thing I could compare it to would be a 2x4 smashing into a tree. I think oh god a bear's come to search our food. And that's 50 yards away. But nothing out of the ordinary for New Hampshire. Sleep took over once again, and I remembered waking up to the sun rising over the peaks. How can you sleep with a bear there? I stumbled out of my tent to see Ellis also waking up slowly. As we made our morning oats and coffee, I wander around the site again to see if I can find the marks of bears left. Instead, I notice something odd. The small notebook is open. I swear I put it back where I found it. Closed and in the back corner of the shelter, not open on the floor. Hey, Ellis. Were you checking out this camp log last night? Nah, I passed out, man. It's not like there's anything to read anyway. He responded. You sure? I comment as I bend over to pick it up. The lone hiker's name was not so lonely now. At least 20 more names have filled the pages. The lone traveller whose name was originally on the first page could now be found several pages deep into the notebook. I toss it to Ellis, whose face instantly dropped when he sees all of the names on it. Great. 
now I know it's not just dehydration or delusion from the previous day. Dude, we must have seen that thing last night. There's no freaking way we missed all these names. How could we? This is when I began to tell Ellis about the snapping noise during the night. I received nothing other than instant denial. These sounds were not the results of some hooligans or backward crazies following us. Ellis was convinced. It wasn't a bear either. Ellis led us out of the site and we instantly made our way back. A year has passed since then and I'm still not quite sure what happened on our night at the Dry River Shelter 3. The memory of seeing a single name written on the front page is so clear in my mind now, I could not have mistaken it in. Could I have made the noises? Obviously not. I was asleep and they're further away. Ellis was asleep too. I would have seen him. I don't like to think it was paranormal, but he really begs the question. All logical explanations have went out the window. And of course a bear didn't write in there. It just terrifies me thinking of it now. I'm a 17 year old high school guy with a weak body. I live in a small town in the Philadelphians and this town is surrounded by rice fields with a highway going straight across it. Part of my usual weekend routine is to go jogging early in the morning. This is at some time around 5am. My usual jogging route is from my house, somewhere in the middle of town to a small hill with a wonderful view of town in the morning. To reach my destination, I would have to jog on the side of the highway. From time to time, fog would appear on the highway, and once you're inside, you can only see 10 or 15 feet before it all goes white. So one Saturday, I decide to jog. I invite one of my friends, the same age as me, to join me, since he follows the same route anyway. We left home at 5am, proceed to the highway. As usual, a thick fog blanketed the highway. The cars that were passed by had their lights on, and there were several one ways because of road repairs. As we enter the fog, we decide to jog along the side of the road, past a couple of roadworks, about a hundred meters long each. Now all's well at this point. We're a bit exhausted, but otherwise fine. We barely encountered anyone else, and usually, they're just fellow joggers. Then, we come across another roadwork, and we saw this guy crouch down on the asphalt. He was wearing a dirty orange vest, and he had a similarly dirty hard hat on. We can't really see his face, but decide just to ignore it. He looks as though he's fidgeting with something in his hands, so we thought he was just holding a few tools or something. Also, there was no one there but us, me, my friend and that guy. The fog's thick as hell. My friend signalled to me to keep a distance from the guy and I followed him. When we get closer, we can hear him humming a strange tune under his breath, which in of itself isn't that weird, but boy, we were wrong. As we get closer, he starts acting erratically. He stopped for a moment as I passed him, then starts laughing. It wasn't a regular laugh, it sounded sinister and a little dry. It was really loud so it began to freak me out. We didn't increase our speed at this point as we think he's messing with us. But he doesn't stop, he just kept laughing and laughing and we knew it was beyond a prank. I can't describe his laugh more than, I just didn't trust it. We didn't look back. We were speeding up now, as we were starting to see the hill. I was gasping for air, but somehow I didn't let that stop me. I forced myself on, and my friend was doing the same. He was probably 50 meters behind us when I looked at him. He had stopped laughing, but now? He was standing straight and staring at us. He called out to us in my language in an arranged tone. 
That's when adrenaline kicked in. I just ran and ran until we reached the hill. In hindsight, I don't know how I was able to push myself for so long. When we finally arrive at the top, we're exhausted and nearly collapse on a cement bench and stay there for over an hour. Like a breath of fresh air, my friend laughs in a comedic manner. We then walk towards home. I haven't ate yet, I was so hungry, and as we passed the road, we saw the guy in. He's no longer there. The only people there are wearing construction outfits that are working on the traffic signals, but nowhere near the man. As I got home, I told my parents about it and they said it's probably a nut job looking for someone to rob, who's probably stole the outfit, and I never went jogging again in the fog after that. This happened a few years ago when I was mountain walking. We started as a large group, but after some time of everyone choosing their own pace, I end up walking alone. I was walking downhill through a thick forest area when I slipped on an unsteppable part of the trowel, falling fully. It hurt quite a lot. Before I could get up, I see a deer walking out of the trees to my left, standing in front of me. This is not natural, because deers usually avoid human contact. Something was really off about this deer, I didn't know what. Its eyes appeared lifeless, filled with uneasiness. Then it opened its mouth to show multiple rows of what appeared to be razor sharp teeth, and let out an ear shattering scream. It sounded like nothing I ever heard before. It shouldn't exist. I watch quite a lot of horror movies, and yet none have come close to the scream of this. It was so demonic. After that scream, it closed its jaws and walked away to the side of the woods. Now I've never told this story to anyone else before, but I'm sure what I saw was a wendigo. It just horrifies me knowing that I saw this thing. For a second when it happened I thought maybe I've hit my head, but I had no head injuries whatsoever and I knew exactly how I landed. It almost put me off running in the woods entirely. When I was young, I worked as a backpacking guide in Western NC. My schedule dictated a full 8 day shift with 6 days off. During those six days to myself, my other co-workers and me would play in the woods. In the summer, you can't beat a mountain swimming hole. One of our favourite activities was called Paradise Falls, alternatively called Wolf Creek Falls. This is a cliff jumping spot with a huge swimming area, a tiny slot canyon and an inner pool. Most will venture just to do the small jump even though it's the smallest and arguably least accessible. Even though the jump is almost 9 foot at most, you must do 10 minutes rock scaling to get there. We are all adventuring in and out from inside this tiny canyon, and you can't see the main pool. Well, we got to the jump and coaxed the first person off, a fellow guide who had never been to the spot before. She jumped successfully, and swam into the main pool and beach area. Then she screamed. Because she was now out of sight, myself and another guy jump in together and swam the short distance to her, with the others in tow. Of course we figured she was injured somehow. She was treading water and just staring wide-eyed at the riverbank. When I looked to the shore, there stood a man, his massive, easily six seven and appears to have no hair on him, wearing beat-up overalls. Perhaps the most disturbing is that he had folds of skin all over his body. Imagine the Michelin Man, but this is on his face, arms and chest, everywhere with these weird layers. He's also armed with a shotgun, staring intently at us. He just stood there and watched as we grab anything important, 
and speed out of there. He walked slowly back into the forest and we never saw him again. Around 8 to 10 years ago, I was at a lake way out in the woods on some land that my dad owned. I was alone aside from my dog, a terrier. I had only been fishing on the little pier in the southeast corner for about 10 minutes when I get an almost overwhelming feeling of being in danger and then notice something or someone watching me from the tree line on the opposite side of the lake. I was a kid but somehow keep composure. For some reason, I felt it important that whatever it was did not know I was aware of them. Anyway, it started moving slowly from tree to tree, near taking its eye off me, but never truly facing away from me. The lake's about 70 yards wide, so I can't really see details, but I know where they're facing. After realising that it was following me, I pulled my pole down and walked down the pier and up the bank towards the trail back of our cabin, which is about a quarter of a mile away. Once I hit the tree line, I bolted to the cabin and waited there with one of my dad's guns until my parents got home. The only witness I had was my dog and he saw it as well. I know because when he saw the figure, he instantly starts growling in a low tone until I make him stop. I have no idea who, or what it could have been, or what the intentions are, but they're most certainly not good. This took place in southeast Mississippi, near the Alabama border, back in the 90s. We didn't live there, but we spent most weekends up there. I know it couldn't have been a normal person because our nearest neighbour was a very old couple who literally lived miles away. Aside from the lake area that our cabin's on, the surroundings very thick forest. The figure was extremely tall as well. I have a very good memory, especially for details. Also shortly before I noticed it, I got a very strong feeling that I was being watched. I never felt safe there again, and I was so glad my dad sold it. This incident happened to me when I was younger, probably around 19 or 20. I used to drive around the countryside in the woods for hours on end, up to literally 6 hours, smoke cigarettes while I listened to music daydreaming. I've been through a lot, so this is a nice way for me to let off steam and digest all the badness that happened to me in the past few years. There is a route that goes into the southern part of my state and eventually takes you to Maryland, if I'm not mistaken. If you keep going all the way, it will eventually take you to Florida. It was a road I found to be very fond as, as it intersected with a lot of interesting places. It could take you to cities and beaches alike, all the while somehow remaining isolated and rural. On one of those day trips, I was driving through a heavily wooded area that opens up into a field lined with trees on my left. I was pretty zoned out at this point, but something on the side of the road immediately caught my attention. In fact, it even seemed that time slowed or I could see this apparition more vividly than any other thing I've ever seen in my life. What I saw was an older, balding man dressed in a full Catholic priest garb. His mouth is open, appearing to be in grief, screaming at the sky. He was standing in front of a dead deer, a buck. From what I recall, it was around three points, maybe four, Behind the deer was a 1970s Crown Vic style police car with its lights on. It had no markings on it whatsoever to signify what country it's from. And no one's in the vehicle. I don't even think it had an engine running sound. It appeared as though the vehicle had been parked there all day. The other odd thing about this vehicle is that 
it has no damage on the front end to show that it's responsible for hitting the deer, nor was there any blood or anything. The deer seems fine. Taking a step back, trying to think of what I saw, it had the appearance of being staged or set up somehow, as if it was a prop for a movie. Everything was just so odd. For the speed I was travelling at, the glance I cast on this spectacle was only 4 seconds, but it's so abruptly singed into my mind now. I have never seen anything like it. For some reason I started crying after seeing it. Did the forces that shaped time or something just merge and I saw something from back then? I don't know, I've even been on the same spot from this trip, and there's never a trace of it, not even the body of the deer or tyre tracks from the police car that could be seen. Like a breeze, it was gone. A thing so out of place it could not have been from its surroundings, I have no answers to any of these questions. Only a lack of closure for something that's scarring my brain for about four years and one of the strangest things that happened to me wasn't actually during my time being on station it was actually during a vacation that I had now during my vacation I loved to go up to Alaska whenever I had the chance I'd always love going out there I mean truly I was an outdoorsman so I guess it was kind of second nature for me to be out there but I also owned a snow cabin out there well I call it as a snow cabin but I guess it's just a cabin, but you know, Alaska. Now, during one particular trip I went out there, I had a strange feeling that something was going to happen and I just couldn't shake the feeling. I don't know why. Now this actually happened before I reached the cabin, and to get to the cabin itself it was actually quite a trek to be honest. I had to go through the snow for a number of days to actually reach the cabin, but I didn't really have an issue. It was a really remote area and I love being outside like I said. Now when I first made it to the cabin, something just fell off. I couldn't quite describe it but it was almost like something in the atmosphere was just different. I brushed it aside and had a pretty good day really for the first day. Now I absolutely love to do reading and journaling and actually wrote poems. There was a bench that I loved to go to where I'd just sit and write my poems. I would do this and other activities during the day. Now one time that I was sitting on the bench, I remembered writing one of my poems and reading it back, and as I looked up, I had a strange feeling that somebody was just over my shoulder. Now every time I looked there, I couldn't see anyone. I thought maybe something was off and I could have been stalked by an animal or something so I decided it was best if I just headed back. So I get halfway back and I'm just starting to get out of sight of the bench and I can see somebody sitting there on the bench. I scream out hey hey and they don't reply whatsoever. I realise that I should probably go and grab a weapon if this is actually going to go down, so I quickly head back to my cabin. I come back again with my weapon in hand, but unfortunately they're long gone now. Oh god, I knew I should have just went up to them. Now, it could have been an animal, but mind you, why would they have just went to the exact spot that I was sitting in and looked so human-like? That I couldn't describe. Now that was probably the first strange encounter that I had on this trip that wasn't just my senses, I could actually see something now. Brushing it aside, I thought maybe just maybe it was an animal, or I could have just been seeing things. You know, once you've been in the snow for too long, just staring at wire everywhere, it kind of messes with your head, but this felt distinctly different. And also, I've never experienced anything like it before, so this was definitely odd. So anyway, I put it aside and go to sleep. Now I'm awoken in the night by some kind of strange call outside. It sounds like somebody trying to make the sound of an animal but not really pulling it off properly. It's quite hard to describe. I quickly get up out of bed and open the door which leads to kind of like my living space I guess you could call it. 
for the main part of the cabin. Now I stop to remain silent for a few seconds but I can't hear this thing again. Now once again, I think maybe just maybe it's my imagination but I'm not too sure. So I decide to make sure that I have my weapon at hand and I made sure that I closed the blinds this time because I stupidly left them open before thinking the light would be a nice way to wake up naturally. But now I realise it's probably a stupid idea. But this sound is weird. It doesn't really sound like an animal that I know, but it's hard to put my finger on. So anyway, we got a few more days without anything happening and again I'm really enjoying myself now. I'm having a really good time and I slowly go over to one area that I love to go to. Now this takes about a half hour hike away from the cabin and this place is just beautiful. It's up on a little hill but the trees here are absolutely stunning and it's somewhere that I absolutely love to go to. Now on the trek over there, I realise again that something just feels off but again I can't describe it. I don't know why, this feeling keeps on coming randomly, almost like I'm at a heightened sense of danger, almost like I'm psychic to something that's going to go wrong that hasn't just yet. But alas, I continue and eventually get to my spot. Now this is a great spot, I absolutely love to do my writing here, I'm basically just doing some journaling, and I've decided to write down some of the previous events, we're not really detailing them too much because I think, well, I don't want to end up on one of those late night shows about serial killers and they're reading my diaries. Now, wouldn't that be funny if that had actually happened? So anyway, as I'm sitting there, I realise that my coffee's running low and I go to get some more out of my thermal thing. As I turn around, I realise now that there seems to be some kind of footsteps which on my own, which is really weird because I know for a fact that it was only fresh snow that had led up to this point and they certainly weren't my footprints. They kind of half look like animal prints but not really. It almost looks like somebody wore animal shoes trying to pull like one of them Sasquatch pranks on people but a little different. Now the shoe marks are actually quite big now I have a size 10 feet in US so I guess this was probably roughly what you call an average American shoe size but these were kind of animal shaped. It's almost like they've got little hoof markings but they're not exactly hoofs so this is really weird. Now my fears come back again and I decide that I should go. Especially because I can truly get lost while journaling and I don't want to be in that vulnerable state while there's something around that I'm not completely in control of. Because as a ranger you get taught to be in control of your environment at all times if possible and I certainly wasn't now. I then start the hike back again and again I can't shake this feeling that something's off though only this time I have something to follow once more. It's not just my senses, I can actually visually see the tracks in the snow. Now what's odd is they don't stop where I thought they would. I thought maybe they would just go off into the woods and it was some kind of animal, but no. These seem to have followed me the whole way. I mean literally, I get all the way up to the door of the cabin and it's virtually like they've been there the whole time. I decide that maybe, just maybe, it was something I had done and I hadn't really realised at the time. But again, this is really odd to be honest and I can't really put my finger on what this could have been. I'm starting to get a little paranoid now and I'm convinced that there's some kind of animal that's following me. Oh god, nice. Now this is something to be concerned about. There may have been an animal around my cabin that I wasn't aware of. But it's really odd for it to follow people because usually animals won't be predatory and especially for someone of my size that seems very unlikely. Now another week goes by and surprisingly nothing happened and I basically completely forgot about the previous events. So basically I was on one of my last days in the cabin and I was kind of definitely looking forward to getting back while simultaneously knowing I was going to miss the place. There's something about being out there on your own which is really nice but to be honest after a while the loneliness kind of becomes a problem and your body or brain I guess tells you it's time to head back 
and that was happening for me. So I decided once more to return to the same spot where I'd been journaling before and I'd seemingly been followed. Now as I set out walking, I realised what's really strange today is there seems to be a dog. It kind of looks more like a wolf, but it's quite hard to say at this point because it's just out of sight. But god, I think this is really strange because I've never seen any out here before and it would be rare to see one on its own like that. I realised that it's probably not a good idea to head out now just in case there's more and god that makes sense, they were probably hunting me earlier in the week and that was letting my primitive senses take over. I realise now that I should quickly head back and that's what I do. To be honest the rest of that day was pretty boring, I basically just packed up my things, had some more coffee and just reminisced a bit as my time of working as a ranger and for some other things in my previous life. Now I feel pretty tired and I settle in for the final night. Now before I tuck myself in, I quickly do a scan of the perimeter of the cabin. Nothing seems odd. Everything's normal and luckily there's some fresh snow so I can actually see around quite a good way and know that there's nothing really following me, so no wolves for now. So with that, I go to bed. Now I must have fell asleep for only about 20 minutes because there's some kind of weight on the edge of my bed. I think it's nothing and just presumed it's some kind of vertigo due to being tired and in a lucid state, but I realise now that it's not. Wondering what it is, I start to move and then, in my ear I hear, I know you're sleeping. It takes a second for my brain to lag into life and suddenly I realise that that's odd. I definitely didn't imagine that. I quickly bolt up and try and hit the lights but miss it and I can hear something sprinting away. There are footsteps just going outside. I can just about see through my blurry eyes that somebody's just ran through the door. I can't make out much but it's a tall figure, seemingly inky black. I quickly slam the door shut and grab my gun, I fling on all the lights and I'm slowly waking up trying to comprehend what's just happened. I realise my feet are wet as I've realised that there's some snow tracks from somebody's shoes obviously which have been in my cabin. That thing was real, that did just happen. So angry and scared at what just happened, I bust the door open and scream out hey Whoever done that, you better come back here now. I then fire my gun into the air just to scare whoever's around and I scream out which I probably shouldn't have, you'll be next. I look around and I can't see anything. I take a few seconds and calm down a bit and realise that I can probably use the snow to my advantage. I quickly do a circle of the perimeter but there's no footsteps, literally only my own that I've just made. How could this be? Someone was just here a second ago. I come outside again and I finally find some tracks. You're gonna get it now, I scream, still in rage. I followed these tracks for probably a good 20 feet until suddenly, they just stop. Literally, I have no idea where the tracks went off to and that was enough for me. I sprint back into the cabin and I gather up all of my things and I set out in the darkness with my gun at hand and my finger constantly on the trigger. I go in the opposite direction which is basically the long way around from where I've seen the tracks, certain that no one's been there because there's no footprints. I'm still trying to calm down and make sense of what happened and for the next four hours I trek on and eventually make it to an area that I can stop. I ended up putting up my tent and sleeping here for a little while and then as the day breaks I make my way back to where I can get home. I never went camping out there again or back to the cabin. I eventually sold the cabin after a couple of years of not using it and I've been left with more questions than answers and they're ones that I don't think I can answer or ever will.